Thank you. Thanks to the amazing IT team at the town of Innisfil. Welcome to our regular council meeting for August the 12th. Uh, we will open the meeting and I'll welcome members of council, staff, and also uh, residents that are joining us both by YouTube and also who have joined us here in the Zoom meeting. Um, I'll provide you with a, a statement asking um, that if you have a, um, a phone, if you put it on silent, and to let you know that uh, this will, you, your, will be video and audio recorded and your comments will form part of the public record. Um, we will also be retained in according to the town's retention bylaw and for more information about that collection, you can contact anyone at the clerk's services. So I wanna thank uh, council again. Um, it's been, um, we've been doing double duty uh, this COVID summer. Normally we get a bit of a break and I'd be welcoming you all back from your August off because we like to take one month off. Unfortunately this year uh, it did not happen. Uh, and uh, we have, we've been busier than ever, but uh, I really appreciate that everybody is doing double duty and thank you to all of council for uh, all of your hard work during this COVID uh, time. So we'll uh, start with the, um, with the open forum. Uh, now this, this is a, a long list for open forum. We usually have two or three people attending. Uh, we have uh, we have nine people for a, for a total of ten minutes, which uh, is really rather tricky. Um, so I'm going to ask if, uh, if council would concur that perhaps we could uh, lengthen the time of open forum for this evening to uh, allow uh, two minutes per uh, per attendee, if if that uh, if that's acceptable, or if somebody else has a better idea. Um, I want to just explain because I did get a couple of emails today kind of not understanding why um, at the public meeting there was uh, much more time to speak than at this. So when we have a planning public meetings, uh, we're, definitely, we're usually dealing with one or two items, one item per meeting, and everybody is given ample time to speak to an item uh, and ask questions of clarification. And we have uh, a lot of um, uh, presentations from either the applicant or, uh, and our planners who kind of give background. Um, then uh, after that, we receive both the comments from that evening and then we also receive comments in writing from members of the public after that. And all of that goes to our staff team who when they do their final report for council's consideration, um, put all of those comments and provide answers for all of those comments and questions in their staff report, which is which uh, I believe most of these uh, def, uh, first open forum uh, tonight will be regarding 6.1. I'm sorry, C, C.1. So the idea of, uh, of tonight is council will uh, at the appropriate time with many of the other staff reports on the agenda, will debate and uh, make decisions and vote on items on this regular council meeting tonight. So the idea of open forum is to allow just uh, a couple of minutes to uh, have people address an item that is on the agenda. And, uh, but it's, it's not to be a full delegation, but just uh, comments, and in this case, probably new business uh, that we haven't already heard from before or uh, in writing before. So with that said, I've probably taken up most of the 10 minutes now, sorry about that, but I just wanna make sure that the process was understood. And so we'll start uh, with the first uh, open forum and item, and I'll get my clock ready to time. And it's uh, Sally Stanley, and Sally, I'd invite you to, turn on your video and your audio and uh, and then we'll um, we'll ask you to um, make your comments I'll, I'll say this once and then perhaps everybody um, if you're listening uh, when you've had your opportunity to speak you have you can either exit or you can uh, just turn off your video and your audio again and stay on the line uh, or you can um, go off and, and follow us on YouTube, whatever is your preference. 
So uh, Sally, whenever you're ready, Ms. Stanley. Okay, thank you very much, Council Mayor. Um, Councilors, um, good evening. You know me by now. <laughs> you know that I want you to uh, vote for option three. Um, but I'd like to really speak to you a little bit about marketing because um, my, I am a marketing consultant in many years of experience. I'd like to share with you the premise of good marketing because it does apply to our five zoned lots. It is to use a rifle versus a shotgun approach. A shotgun approach th throws stuff out into the market to see what sticks. Alternatively, a rifle approach requires you to hone in on who your key prospect is and create a message and product that motivates them to buy by fulfilling their needs. The rifle approach is, is targeted marketing and it generates far greater results and, and considerably is more co cost effective. In the case of these five lots being proposed for rezoning on Lakelands, um, that's basically the rezoning is identifying the key customer as a developer. A developer is motivated by money and they want high reward for their investment. Given um, the business case that I've, I've submitted to all of you, there's not gonna be any money left on the table for a developer to develop these five properties. So no matter how long you wait and how many iPads or whatever you offer them, um, if economics don't make it viable for them, um, it is not going to be something they're gonna buy into. And so your vision for this lakefront is not going to happen. For a residential customer, however, these waterfront lots have far more appeal. There is a shortage of them and people are lining up to buy them. Just look at our street and, over the, and the new homes that have sprung up over the past few years. Our next door neighbor who just north of us, one of the five lots, purchased the property to build a residential home, not a dentist office. And uh, Lima Gravelson in the second lot is also eager to renovate and improve her property. The chances for the municipality to benefit with the increased property tax if, they're, if people are allowed to rebuild or improve them is a sure thing. It's a sure thing than, a, than banking on, an, on a developer because there's no risk even in the short term. So think about it. The province is not, going, is not asking you to rezone these waterfront lots. Developers haven't come forward at all over the past year to buy any of these properties for commercial development because as you can see, it's, it's just not profitable for them. And the appeal for a residential waterfront is growing and it's growing especially more during COVID-19. So I say, give the people of Lakelands what they want, a, resident, a residential waterfront on Lakelands Avenue. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you much, very much, Ms. Stanley. Next is Mr. Seidman, Mr. Paul Seidman. I'm just checking to see if Mr. Seidman is on the call. I'm here. Oh. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Did you? Okay. You, wonderful. You can choose to turn know. on your video if you wish, but you don't have to. Okay. I've got video as well. If you can see me, okay. uh, I am opposed for the rezoning of uh, all five waterfront lots on Lakelands Avenue. Um, I'm, I'm for option three. I, I don't think it makes any logical sense to consider rezoning these homes for commercial purposes. Uh, I don't think anyone is lining up to want to purchase them. Uh, recently, some you know, one of them is, is listed uh, that just came out for 1.9 mil million, the corner house. Uh, if you do the math and figure out from a land value point of view, it's basically double the price of any other lot on the street. Uh, you know, homes are not selling for that kind of money for land value only. Uh, it's not feasible to knock it down and build a commercial property. No one's going to want to rent it. Now with COVID and who knows how long COVID is going to continue, there's going to be a lot of different, you know, restrictions with occupancy, all that kind of stuff that, you know, there's, you know, the future will, will, will see what happens with how many tables you can have in a restaurant, et cetera, whether people want to start eating in restaurants, 
And the fact that the properties are basically very seasonal, uh, you know, if you did a traffic study, which I don't even know if you have done to determine how many vehicles drive all the way down to the lake versus other uh, malls and plazas during the non, you know, seasonal cottage times. It doesn't make sense from a feasibility point of view that someone's going to buy these properties and develop them and rent them and a business is going to pay the rent fees to occupy them to earn the kind of revenues that they need to earn for the kind of rents they need to pay. So I think it really doesn't make sense. I don't think the people on, on Lakelands want to see commercialization on the waterfront area. And I think people that have homes there are far going to be happier with fixing up their homes, building homes, and living there and making that a part of their future rather than more empty space for rent, just like that you know, retirement home or nonprofit uh, facility that the entire main floor has been for rent for the last two years and there hasn't been one tenant rushing to occupy any space. So I'm hoping the council will do the right thing and do not include those five homes in the commercialization and uh, work on improving Innisfil and all their other ideas, but take those homes off the map and put them back to residential designation. Thank you, Mr. Seidman. Next is Michael Stanley. Thank you, uh, Mayor Dollins and council members. So as you know, the entire world economy has changed significantly. And as a leading global expert in strategic planning, I'm currently working with some large corporate and municipal clients, for example, City of Toronto, Federal Reserve Bank, Roche, to create updated plans built on a new set of assumptions. I mean, the assumptions that the town has used to make these decisions regarding Lakelands were built on studies from 2005 with some updates in 2015. Today, restaurants and retailers are struggling. Many have or will soon close. Developers and commercial buildings are struggling because of an increase in office vacancies. Canadian Institute of Planners identified that great communities of our country attract newcomers, businesses, investment, and admirers. And this aligns with your official plan policies to clearly prioritize the creative pursuit of shaping vibrant and engaging destinations. Walk along Innisfil Beach Road and be honest. Does Alcona reflect any of these characteristics? And if and when restaurants and retailers think about opening or expanding, they're gonna look for vibrant communities. So it's time to recognize assumptions have changed, amend the official plan our place, return the waterfront properties on Lakelands to its original designation as residential, but instead seize the opportunity to develop as SGL Planning and Design Inc. in their study for the town in December of 2015 said, develop a main street commercial sector in the existing corridor. Great opportunity, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Stanley. Um, next is Mr. Gordon French. Hi, Mr. French. Um, it's been a, a little while since I've been, get, been able to get in on a meet, uh, meeting. Uh, my last meeting was in January. And um, I was, uh, um, through all of this, uh, at, at the meetings we've been at, under the impression that this is uh, sort of um, the town is bringing forward ideas uh, of the changes and uh, trying to decide on the direction that we're going in. And uh, I have to agree with the three speakers that went before me that uh, um, basically any of the uh, um, commercial changes to Innisfil Beach Road, um, I believe that they're uh, uh, financially uh, not uh, going to uh, happen because by the time you look at what you have to pay to buy out these properties, uh, these commercial places aren't going to be viable and, and be able to uh, compete in an industry. Um, putting that aside, because these other three people already talked about that, and uh, but I agree with all of their points. Um, my idea of the park is that it's a green land, it's a green area. And I don't see any of that uh, bringing the city into the park. I just don't see that 
the city belongs in the park. And I think if you walk the street as you're walking down into the park, um, you have to appreciate all the trees and the green that the residential um, uh, provides beside the park. And it, you don't have all the noise and the, and the distortion of a, of a commercial zone where you're gonna have all of these things happening that you're just not gonna have the peace and quiet that a park demands. And I, so I think the plan in my mind of bringing commercial into the park is just ludicrous that, uh, that you should uh, stop the uh, downtown at uh, the 25th side road. You should uh, um, be spending uh, um, more time encouraging the downtown to start and to thrive from that point because there is a lot of uh, undeveloped area there that uh, would really make a nice downtown. And um, parking is the biggest problem in the park. And I think that, uh, that you should be um, getting more parking uh, opened up at the back of the park surrounding the, uh, the water treatment plant and uh, getting the boats out of, the, uh, out of the, the, the mainstream part of the park there get a nice amphitheater, get the park uh, offering uh, more usable beach space and, and picnicking, but keep it green. It's just a park, you know, like you don't need to build a city in a park. It, it's just, it just, the two don't go together, you know, and, but get some more parking that's back from the park because you've got a lot of people want to come there and uh, we live here and, and we see it. Uh, every uh, hot weekend people backed up all over the place looking for somewhere to park let these people park for 40 or 50 dollars for the day they'll be happy to use the park and the town Mr. Makes Mr. Money. French, I, i'm sorry i hate to interrupt it's just um the My time is up no it's it's okay oh. and it's just i wanted you to concentrate more on the rezone um the park okay. master but, plan but, is is a different animal and yeah okay but I, I, I know the two have to work together but my point is that the commercial um, it just isn't uh, um, financially uh, feasible. I don't see it. And it ruins the green space, you know, the, the two. And um, I think these meetings too, you guys just seem to keep pushing the one agenda. And if this is a democracy, we should, the town should be saying, well, um, we've got more than one idea. Do you want it to be a green park? Do you want this, this city in the park? Uh, giving the people a choice, but you guys just seem to keep coming and pushing the commercial, the commercial, and uh, it's not really giving us a choice of one, two, or three. So I, I would like to see that change in what's going on. Thank and you, Mr. I, French. I, thank you. Next thank is you for, for, for having a voice. Yeah, Yo, you're more than welcome, always. Uh, uh, next is Ann Smith. Good evening, Mayor Dolan, members of council and town staff, and we do recognize how busy you've all been over this summer period of time. Um, I am opposed to the rezoning of five waterfront properties on uh, Lakelands Avenue. And whilst we all recognize the tremendous thought and effort put forth by the town's planning department, and believe me, I read every word of the 79 page document plus the attachments, we have yet to hear compelling evidence as to why they feel it's necessary to redesignate properties on a residential street as commercial. Ontario is now officially in a recession. We have a province-wide deficit of 38.5 billion, mainly due to the COVID-19 pandemic and GDP is expected to decline by 6.6% in 2020. Life as we know it pre-COVID will not, if ever, return to normal for many years to come. Fiscally responsible businesses will be reluctant to allocate capital to new projects. We've already seen the tremendous impacts on the restaurant, hotels and travel industries, and the impacts will last for many years. The town's planning department has many projects in the works and kudos to them for that. We are all mainly in favor of lands along IBR west of 25th side road to be developed. There's a lot of land available for the number of businesses that may be interested in building condos or restaurants or stores. That same enthusiasm is not there for development on a residential street, i.e. Lakelands, which consists of well-built, well-maintained and high property tax paying family homes. It is a vibrant community. 
Over the past year or so, the residents of Lakelands have been unified in their objections to the rezoning via surveys, emails, petition, and public meetings. Those of us who live on the street have seen the impact this potential rezoning has had on the lives of those whose homes are affected for over a year now. It has been an extremely emotional and stressful time as they have seen potentially their life savings plans and future retirement lives threatened by this bylaw. There's a high level of nervousness. If these five houses are rezoned, which block of houses will be next? This is not just about bricks and mortar and potential future development, which may or may not happen. These are people's lives that are being impacted. I respectfully ask that council consider removing the five lakefront homes on Lakeland Avenue from the plans. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Smith. Uh, next is uh, Daryl McCullough. Yes, thank you, Mayor Dolan and council. Um, I'm opposed to the rezoning of the five properties on Lake Lens Avenue for the purpose of uh, building a marina and our commercial properties. I'm right on the water and I'm retired and during the months of June, July and August, uh, even on beautiful days, Monday through Friday, I see very little water activity on the lake, boating, uh, big boats and such. I see more people uh, in canoes and kayaks and small outboards fishing. So I don't feel that uh, we need a marina. And as far as the commercial properties go, we have such a short season. I don't think they'd be successful either. I know I didn't buy my property up here to go shopping. I bought it for the nature and the park and the lake. And I think it's most unfair that the owners that are directly affected by the rezoning have had their lives turned upside down for a vision that uh, will probably fail or not come to be. So I'm urging council to vote against the uh, rezoning of these five properties on Lake Lance Avenue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. McCullough. Uh, next is Sydney Hardy. Oh. Hi there, can you hear me? We can hear you, we can't see you. Okay, I don't know. Um, says the host to stop my video. Um, oh, let them start it. I'm sure they will. There you are. Hi. Hi. Hi there. Um, so good evening, uh, Mayor and uh, Council members. Thanks for having us all here tonight. Um, I would just like to join everyone else in saying that I am opposed to the rezoning of the five waterfront lots on Lakelands Avenue uh, because I'm concerned, uh, obviously, as to what it would mean to um, the street and the neighborhood and the area in general. I believe that the development should be kept to Innisfil Beach Road alone with a focus, obviously, on the areas west of 25 Side Road. Uh, where there are many spaces uh, that had planned to be developed, but um, have been sitting vacant for years. Um, all the uh, empty storefronts that still aren't getting filled. Uh, I'm sure there are numerous causes for the vacant uh, commercial lands that are already sitting empty and undeveloped. And that makes me uh, very concerned uh, that the same could happen on the east side of Innisfil Beach Road. Um, so, um, you know, imagine developers buying up the properties and just waiting and letting them go to, you know, ruin and weeds and making it look terrible uh, while waiting for um, the, you know, conditions to be able to build whatever it is that they want to do, um, which, as we know, can take years. Um, meanwhile, the residents of Lake Lands and Innisfil Beach Road are looking at years of stress and uncertainty about the future of our homes and our lives, uh, while we all wait for something to actually happen one way or another. So I would ask that you please turn down the rezoning amendment bylaw for the properties on Lakelands Avenue so that the ICB lands can be returned to residential zoning and keep further commercial development west of the 25th side road on Innisfil Beach Road. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Hardy. Next is uh, Gordon Knox. Hi, Mr. Knox. Your Worship, members of council and staff, I hope you can hear me. Yes. That's a good thing. Um, yes, my name is Gordon Knox. I live on Lakelands. I was, uh, well, we're neighbors of Sally and Mike, and I'll refer to them as Sally from here on in. Um, I was recruited because of my background. I'm a retired urban planner. I was the planner of uh, record for over a dozen municipalities, mainly in Simcoe County, and I was the planner of record for the town of Wasaga Beach for over 30 years. So I have a little bit of knowledge of planning, tourism, and 
I thought I knew about process. I provided a letter to Sally some time ago that finally I think ended up on your desk and I hope you've had a chance to see that one. And in there I pointed out two very important things happened or basically didn't happen. It's my information that no members of council were aware of these particular five lots when they passed the bylaw to uh, amend the official plan. I'm also told that none of the member, none of the owners of the five lots were aware that this official plan amendment was adopted. Now I know in your report, staff say they did everything that they were supposed to have done, but there's this old saying about the taste is in the pudding as to how council, the residents owners and the resident neighbors didn't know anything about this. Your staff has said that Sally knew about this because she had received an email, which she has said to me on multiple occasions, she did not receive and I believe her because the energy that this person has put into this thing since the interim control bylaw alerted her leads me to only one conclusion that had she known previously, she wouldn't have waited until later. We're talking about a fundamental principle of planning and that is notice and that is democracy. As I said in my, my uh, letter, if this information came before a tribunal and probably a court, I would suggest to you that they would send it back to the municipality on a rocket and tell you to get it right uh, and not come back until you do have it right. I can say without being dramatic in my almost 40 years of serving uh, municipalities throughout this county and beyond, I've never ever come across a situation where neither council nor the affected residents had no knowledge of an, of an amendment. Um, basically, these people have been denied their rights in law and under the Planning Act, in my opinion, and I think you've got to take this into serious consideration. Sally sent you some things in regard to cost, and um, you may have guessed I had a hand in that. I was the president of an engineering, architecture, and urban planning company. I was also the president of a general contracting company. So I have a little bit of background in this, and I understand development. Beyond your official plans and zoning bylaws, which really don't mean a lot to developers, there's three things that they always check off the box first. Sewer, water, and economics. And in, in regard to economics, if the lines of economics do not cross, they will not go forward. What we did to try and bring your attention to what the, the value of these lots, we did a, an estimate that was based on the smallest numbers and almost ridiculously low numbers just to get your attention. And it showed that any kind of development was gonna have a cash flow of at least $1.6 million a year. When that didn't seem to really hit home, we did what I think are reasonable correct figures. That brought that up to $2.6 million income a year without profit. I have an, um, uh, an investment in one of the finer restaurants in the city of Barrie. And I understand how much it costs that person to open his doors. And if I tell you it was about 1 20th of the cost it would open the, that it would take to open the doors of a restaurant on these lots, I wouldn't be too far off. Mr. Mr. Knox, you're about double your time so far. Uh, so if you could wrap it up. Okay, um, thank you very much for that. Lack of, uh, um, there's a number of things, but the bottom line here is option three. And that is what I said in my letter. This is the reasonable, honorable, and decent thing to do simply because of the history of this and the common sense that nothing is going to happen here. So your worship, thank you very much for me being a little over. Uh, I appreciate your uh, putting up with me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Knox. I do want to assure you, we did get your correspondence and also um, Ms. Stanley's correspondence regarding uh, the business case you're talking about. And because everybody else is being so good and coming in under time that, you know, it all kind of worked out. Uh, so next is um, Darlene Rowland. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm very nervous. So I am opposed to the rezoning on Lakelands Avenue. We do not need any more traffic on our streets. Uh, we do not have sidewalks on Lakelands Avenue and it is very dangerous even now. And if you add more commercial business, we will have increased walkers, increased people on bikes and excess vehicles. This really worries me. 
um, it would become much worse if we had retail properties. Economically, the rezoning does not make sense. The empty stores are on Innisfil Beach Road now. They need to be filled, not new places. Vacant lots need to be filled and it needs to be set up nice there. Um, please, please turn down this rezoning amendment bylaw so that Innisfil Beach lands can return to the residential zoning that it needs to be. I personally do not want my property to decrease in value. And I think that's what's going to happen. If you do something like this and you leave it undeveloped for years, it's going to really decrease our properties. And this really is upsetting to me. Please consider my thoughts. Thank you. I'm sorry I'm so nervous. <laughs> don't, don't be silly. Very well spoken. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you. That concludes the um, open forum. And I want to thank everybody for being uh, so respectful, uh, respectful of council and respectful of um, the process. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for the passion and for participating. It is wonderful, even in these times of COVID, that we can have so many people uh, join our meeting. So next is the approval of the agenda. We have uh, a few items that have come in since the original agenda was uh, distributed. So I would be asking for a mover and a seconder to approve the uh, agenda as amended. And that would be Councillor Fowler and a seconder. Councillor Ices, is there any other um, agenda requirement needed? Uh, agenda repair needed, I meant to say. Seeing none, all those in favor? That is carried. Next, I would ask if there's any member of council that would uh, like to, uh, at this time, disclose pecuniary interest on any uh, uh, items on the agenda. I'm, I'm seeing no one, but if at the time, if the time comes and you do uh, discover that you do have a conflict, please just make it known to the clerk's office at that time. And next, uh, presentations and petitions. So our very first uh, presentation and petition is, uh, is a, a very good news story about a couple of uh, Innisfil residents that uh, I'm sure we can be very, very proud of. Uh, young uh, residents from Nantara Shores Secondary School who've had some great achievements. So I would ask uh, that Corbin uh, and Nicholas, if you're on the line, if you could turn on your video. I think I saw Corbin's name earlier. I think I know he's here. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, Corbin. How are you? Good. How are you? How are you? Very good. Thank you. Is, is Nicholas here? Okay, we'll start with you, Corbin. So um, I wondered if you could just uh, tell council and members of the public uh, what, why it is we're extending congratulations uh, to you here today. Yeah, so um, thankfully I was, uh, I was offered the Schulich Leader Scholarship um, from Dalhousie University for engineering. Um, it's a full ride, thankfully. So um, I heard uh, during COVID actually, it was during, uh, it was on May 25th. And uh, yeah, I got a call and they had offered it to me and it was, it was pretty crazy. That's absolutely amazing. And congratulations so much. And yeah, I did you. read about you in the paper and I yeah. remember you saying that you are the first in your family to go to post-secondary school. Is that correct? I am, yes. Most of my family, they've always just been uh, fishermen and farmers. So this was uh, this is pretty exciting to be the first in my family to go to university. That's fabulous. I'm, though, I'm sure Councillor Isis would say there's no better, but no better profession than a farmer. No, nope, my grandpa's uh, a farmer. I go there every uh, summer. <laughs> that's fabulous. It. And also, I think you're going to love uh, the East Coast, uh, Halifax, Dartmouth area. Uh, I think you're you'll have a great experience there. I'm sure. Yeah, I've heard lots of good things about it. Great, so on behalf of council, we just wanted you to attend tonight and we wanted to uh, let you know how proud we are of you 
And uh, please, I hope that you'll uh, stay in touch with us. And I hope that uh, once you become an engineer, you'll come back and maybe work at the town of Innisfil and <laughs> help us out yeah. here. Yeah, of course. Okay, well, thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Corbin. All the best. Thank you. And uh, Nicholas, is Nicholas here? Um, Ms. Toma, did you remember if he, oh, there we are. Hi. Hi, how are you today? I'm Leslie Mooney. Nick's at work tonight. so he Oh, he is. Here. Oh, okay. Well, if you could just, I know proud moms, let us know uh, uh, of Nicholas's accomplishment this year. Well, this year has been a really successful year for Nick. Um, he won the humanitarian award at the church, which was, I mean, was uh, volunteering at the church. And uh, he grew up in that church and he was mentored by a very amazing man, Pastor Howard Courtney, which I know you know really well. And uh, so Nicholas had received, I think, 866 hours for uh, volunteer service. And that a lot of that was the, um, he was doing the gate program um, every year. He, he was volunteering for summer camps. Um, he did the B, he did BGs, uh, children's Bible studies, um, just many, many areas in the church. And, uh, and, and so Nick is off to McMaster in the fall. And he's going to be majoring in environmental studies. And his minor is English, I believe. And then he will be hopefully uh, an environmental high school teacher. That's his end goal. That's fabulous. So, yeah. Ms. Looney, thank you so much uh, for joining us here tonight. And tell Nicholas how proud we are of him and all those hours. I, how many hours do you have to have? I think it's like 30 or something. Yeah, isn't it? I think it's like 40 hours. 40 yeah. hours. So 800, over 800 hours. That's just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But very proud of him. And, and on behalf of council, I know that he did get a, uh, a proclamation in the mail. So, um, or he should have by now. Yes, yes, yes. So oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so on behalf of all of us, please pass on our congratulations. Uh, it's just great to see things like this. I know it's been a Kind of a crazy year for for both um for all students graduating this year and and kind of a tough time i know normally i'd be able to i'd be at um at the rec center and we'd have a giant graduation ceremony and i get to shake everybody's hand but unfortunately that can't happen this year no. but just wanted to recognize um these two gentlemen for uh just extraordinary efforts thank you so thank you. much thank you for doing this and Definitely, um, I'll let Nick know and let him see the video. And he wanted me to make sure that we, we said congratulations to the other gentleman, Corbin. They do go to school together and it's really nice to see, see kids in the same school um, doing so well. So congratulations to him too. Absolutely, thank you so much. Thank and you. it just makes me, it does make me think that uh, we're in such good hands uh, with the youth of today uh, for our makes our future look brighter. So thank you for that. Perfect. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you too. So I would uh, at this point then ask for a mover and a seconder for the uh, recommendation for congratulations, Councillor Waters and Councillor Sadi. Thank, thank you. And all those in favor. And that is of course carried unanimously. Our next uh, presentation or petition is uh, it's a petition submission by Vince Pacone and Sergio Navarretto. Are, are they on the line this evening? Excuse me, Your Worship. Yes. Uh, they uh, uh, just asked that the council receive the petition um, and uh, are not with us this evening. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Uh, so the uh, petition submission was received by council. Everybody did get a copy of it. Okay, thank you very much. And a mover and a seconder to receive that petition, please. Uh, Councillor Fowler and Councillor Waters, all those in favor. And that is carried. And our next uh, delegation is from Karen Forgrave. 
and Karen's going to delegate on the um, interim control bylaw and the rezoning recommendation report. And whenever you're ready, Karen, uh, we have 10 minutes including questions. So if you, um, if you wanna leave us some time for questions, that's fine. Uh, but if you don't, uh, you can take the whole 10 minutes. Thank you. Uh, and the PowerPoint is showing on the screen for everyone, I assume. I'm not in control of that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely is. Great, okay, thank you. So um, I wanna do a presentation about why are we considering rezoning? Um, and I'm Karen Fargave and thank you for having me this evening. Next slide, please. Um, I just want to recognize that in a lot of our documents um, around Innisfil, it says we recognize that empowering citizens to affect change is essential to the community. That's out of our culture Innisfil master plan. Um, and it identifies community driven and inclusivity and accessibility as two of the guiding principles. Similarly, in the community strategic plan, um, innovative, innovative Innisfil 2030, it emphasizes um, the objective of enhancing civic engagement. And the quote is, we will create the opportunities for the town and the community to work collectively to share, to solve shared problems, make informed decisions, set civic priorities, and bring about positive social change. And I really wanna thank the residents who are participating here tonight. Um, and I want us to be cognizant of the fact that they had to navigate a 315 page agenda for tonight's meeting and navigate the intricacies of participating via Zoom at this time. And I want to acknowledge that it can be overwhelming for residents who want to be informed and want to participate in these proceedings. When we have our own families, jobs, and other commitments, it's no small feat that there are so many people here tonight. So thank you to all of them. And I think it really speaks to our commitment to civic and community engagement and speaks to how concerned we are about the potential um, amendment uh, proposal that's in front of us tonight. Next slide, please. So in front of us, we have the amendment about uh, this land that's identified in this map. Next slide. And planning staff have prepared two alternate bylaw amendment options, which either partially remove option two or completely removes option three, the Lakelands Avenue waterfront properties from consideration for rezoning. But I want to ask you, what about option four? On page 12 of the staff report, it states another option to permit the ICB to lapse on August 13th and to allow the subject area to maintain its current residential zoning. That's what I would like to see. Next. I want to take you on a walk down Innisfil Beach Road. So let's start across the road from Sobeys. Next. This is a prime corner lot at Innisfil Beach Road and Jans Boulevard. Our place official plan identifies this very corner as the place to create a town square to serve as the gateway to the commercial core of Alcona. Introducing visible activity at the entrance to the commercial district will encourage people to park their cars and to explore. Not at the corner of or across the road from Innisfil Beach Park. Next. So continuing to walk east along Innisfil Beach Road, this is what we see. Next slide, please. Lots of space, promising future commercial development, some with signs from 2013. Next. Next, we're gonna go through a few pictures here. Thank you to my 12 year old daughter for posing as a model in these pictures. <laughs> so we have coming soon a lot of things that are not there yet. Uh, we've got wide open lots on the main street that are much more desirable to developers than residential properties. So continuing farther east, there is more land that is already zoned for commercial use. Empty lots, lots of vacant land. Next. Then going to the south side of the same road, same space in Innisfil Beach Road. Um, that's at a Julem, again, empty lots. And then looking back west on Innisfil Beach Road, back towards the Sharpest Drug Mart, you can see that there's land there as well. So to put the photos in perspective, there's that uh, rectangle that I've drawn there that shows where we have walked virtually in the pictures uh, down Innisfil Beach Road. Um, just in that small area, you can see that that's a small area of Innisfil Beach Road, um, well away from the uh, 25th side road that we are talking about um, to potentially amend in, in the document today. Next slide, please. So then we reach Crossroads Plaza. Next slide. Where there are some examples of vacancies and turnovers with Popeyes apparently coming soon. Next slide. I think you have to press the next button to get a picture. 
There you go. Uh, thank you. Um, again, an example of turnover that I gave in my presentation in June, looking at a prime retail plaza, uh, should be a prime location at St. John's Road and Innisfil Beach Road right across from Tim Hortons. Um, again, we see evidence of uh, the difficulty of the retail sector with a lot of turnover there. Next slide. So maybe potential retailers are looking for new spaces. Next. This is across the road from Crossroads Plaza, the new building that has pharmacy at the bottom. Next. But there are two stores of new office space that's still for lease. Next slide. This is a really key example. This is right at the corner of the 25th side road and Innisfil Beach Road. And for over a year, as someone else alluded to, there is commercial space that is for lease. And this is a key example because we're at the beginning of the land that is up for, for discussion tonight. So this is the corner, the west corner of Innisfil Beach Road and the 25th side road. And uh, the decision to be before you tonight council is to decide whether we need additional commercial space um, by rezoning east of here towards the lake. Next, please. So why are we looking at zoning residential spaces? Looking at a staff report from 2012 cited in the current uh, 2020 report, it identifies a mixed use two or MU2 zone as the central precinct between Jan Boulevard, where we just walked, and the 25th side road to serve as the core of the downtown, allowing, allowing for commercial and mixed use developments of up to seven stories in height. This is option four. This is what we would like to see next. This is taken from the phase one discussion paper, the retail sector from October, 2015. Again, outlined in red on the map there, you can see what is designated as the downtown core commercial area. And it stops at the 20th side road before reaching the lands across from Innisfil Beach Park. Next slide, please. Here are photos of residences on Innisfil Beach Road in a proposed rezoning area. Here are photos of residents on Lakelands Avenue in the proposed rezoning area. And what about the shoreline bylaw amendments? The staff recommended options one and two both require the amendment of the Our Shore bylaw, which is intended, quote, for the promotion of ecologically sound and safe development along the lake shore, lakes and coast shoreline. So why are we considering weakening this protected document in order to enable commercial development? Next slide, please. Why are we looking at rezoning these residential spaces? Development space already exists, not costly waterfront properties. There's space close to existing subdivisions so that people can walk, promoting active transportation, which is one of our goals in this bill. Trails already exist to connect subdivisions to these properties. Next slide, please. Right now, this multi purpose recreational trail comes out here. There's my daughter again. Next slide, please right across from this, the land that is ideal for developing and has been for some time. So why are we considering rezoning residential lots when there's clearly not the demand for commercial space that has been anticipated? Next slide, please. And regarding the Innisfil Beach Park vision, we have concerns. The report states that staff have prepared the proposed amendments in coordination with park visioning initiatives and consideration of comments from residents and council, but Councils have already, at the June 24 meeting, expressed many concerns with the vision of the Innisfil Beach Park Master Plan. So the rezone here to be consistent with the park plan tonight just did not make sense. Next slide, please. Also, the trends influencing the retail sector, as other people have alluded to, are not positive. A conclusion statement says, overall, the rate of growth of new retail space is anticipated to be slower than in the past because of a variety of market factors, including the inf increased influence of e-commerce and its effect on bricks and mortar retail. Believe it or not, that was from the 2015 report, the phase of discussion paper of our place. So what about now in 2020? The ongoing effects of COVID-19 are still being realized on the Canadian economy. Social distancing norms have led to unprecedented growth in e-commerce and to the demise of many shops and restaurants. This is not the time to disrupt existing residential areas with new rezoning designations. Please keep commercial space west of the 20th side road where it was originally intended to be, where there's already abundant commercial space and where there's room for more without affecting people's residential properties. It is the responsibility of the mayor, the deputy mayor, and the councillors to represent the residents, the people who elected them. So please turn down the rezoning amendment 
by law so that ICB lands can return to residential zoning. This is option four. Thank you. Thank you much, very much, Ms. Forgrave. I just, your, your video was a bit choppy at times, uh, but I, I, it wasn't bad enough. I heard all, every word, uh, but it, I just wanted to uh, let you know it just was a bit, uh, it was a bit in and out. Um, questions? Thank you. I hope we got the most of my message. <laughs> no, yes, we did. We did. Um, at least I did. The rest of council could hear okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, questions or comments from Ms. For Forgrave, anyone? Seeing none, I want to thank you very much. Oh, Councillor Sadi. Uh, just to thank Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Forgrave for uh, taking the time to go take the pictures and and uh, your presentation, and uh, just to thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments? Seeing none. Oh, Councillor Payne. Just a, uh, just a comment, thank you for coming out and it was a great presentation. I really, I really, um, a lot of your comments is what I've been going through my head today. So thank you very much for your presentation. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, can I get a mover and a seconder for the recommendation to receive the delegation? Uh, Councillor Arsati and Councillor Payne, all those in favor? Those opposed, that's carried. And next we move on to our uh, agenda, item number seven. So we're starting with uh, County Council, Municipal Associations, any updates of any committees that have been going on? Uh, Deputy Mayor Davidson. I uh, just like to say we had uh, County Council yesterday and let the folks know, I think we did about six and a half hours yesterday of Zoom meetings, so it was a long, long process, but it was nice to see the uh, social housing move forward and geared to income housing move forward for Aurelia. That will provide uh, proper accommodations in the future to come. And I think we're moving in the right direction with that particular unit, as both it's environmentally sound, the building, a low cost, and that there will be services for these people within the buildings, so they don't have to leave to find out what they need to assist them. So that was a good move on behalf of county's um, work yesterday. So I thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy. Yeah, it was a long one. And Ms. Forgrave uh, spoke about uh, the 300 plus page agenda. So yeah, we, we know, welcome to our world. <laughs> uh, the county agenda yesterday was 1,050 pages. So yeah, it's, uh, it's been a little bit overwhelming right now. That's, that's for certain. Uh, anyone else have uh, any comments or um, updates that they'd like to report on from any committees that they've uh, been sitting on? Seeing none, we'll move into our consent agenda. Uh, so for those of you who are new uh, to this process, uh, we go through all of the items that on all of the staff reports and minutes and everything that's on our agenda. Uh, there is a staff recommendation proposed for each item. If council's happy with that recommendation and there's no uh, amendment or if they just want to ask a question about, about it, uh, they'll put up their hand. If not, if, if, it, if we pass it and nobody pulls it, that means that all of council is happy with the recommendation that staff have put forward and those recommendations will be confirmed at the end of the meeting. So we'll start with uh, consent item A1, which is the special council minutes of July the 8th. Next is A2, the special council meeting minutes dated July the 15th. B1, the Innisfil Municipal Heritage Committee report dated June the 11th. Uh, Councilor Nichols. Thank you, Worship. I did reach out to a staff on this item and I just wondered there is a, uh, an ask for a possibly considering a, a, an action, uh, sorry, uh, an action plan just for stabilizing these units. Uh, staff did explain that the, our current bylaw does already protect, but that maybe we may, need more teeth. So I'm wondering maybe we should refer this and just possibly revise the recommendation to actually direct staff to develop an action plan. 
Okay, so why don't we move that? Why don't we, uh, we'll uh, defer that to Committee of the Whole if that works for you, uh, yeah. Councilor Nicole. Okay, uh, next is item B2, which is the School Zone Traffic Safety Advisory Committee uh, report dated June the 23rd. Uh, I, I did have one correction in the minutes, and I don't know, uh, Madam Clerk, do I need to pull it to do that, or can I just ask for it to be amended? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. The minutes could be corrected at the council is receiving the summary of the meeting. The minutes would be corrected at the subsequent traffic safety meeting uh, when the traffic safety committee adopts those minutes. Okay, I just wanted to point out for those uh, on council then my, my amendment was uh, 8.1. It said ambient traffic enforcement and that was meant to be automated traffic enforcement. Uh, okay, item B2, uh, sorry, B3 is the uh, Innisfil Helping Hands Program Committee Report. Uh, I just want to take a moment to thank uh, all the members of council who volunteered to sit on the Helping Hands uh, Committee. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, council typically likes to have less meetings and committee meetings and subcommittee meetings in the summer and looks like you guys were, were doing double duty on all these. So thank you so much for uh, coming forward with that. Councillor Fowler? Uh, if I could add to that, <clears throat> your worship, uh, what we ended up doing was helping over 80 families with this. So, I mean, it was one of the highlights so far of my term in office. Uh, we had uh, we had sizable donations from the Innisfil Linus Club and uh, um, Mr. Kostinuk, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, we did a lot of work, it was a lot of elbow grease, but there are times that you, when you when you take a seat like this, you know, when you chair a committee, it's it's worth doing. And, it, and I really appreciate the fact that the two gentlemen I worked with, well, three gentlemen, I apologize, three gentlemen I worked with, were, you know, everything went really smoothly. There was always a lot of respect and we did end up leaving it better than we found it, which is really nice. Thank you, Councillor. Next is item C1, uh, Councillor Arsati. Yes, refer that please. Thank you. Next is item C2, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, the uh, MAMP uh, program. Okay, I just want to point out that uh, it, it's, uh, it's a great program through LAS that they use to identify issues with, uh, with road surfaces. So look forward to working with that. Item C3, the COVID pandemic response update. Uh, I can tell you that uh, today I received a letter from Minister Clark, uh, the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. And we were, um, if you remember the Premier a couple of weeks ago talking about um, uh, $4 billion in funding for COVID response. Uh, we did get a letter today uh, from Minister Clark uh, suggesting that Innisfil's uh, portion for our COVID relief was just over a million dollars. So I can't remember the exact figure, but um, relatively close to, uh, to some of the impacts that we've seen in this report. So that's really good news for us um, that we'll have those impacts will we'll be made whole uh, through that work. And, um, and as always appreciate uh, Minister Clark. He's, um, I've been around for 25 years. He's the most responsive Minister of Municipal Affairs that we have, that I have ever worked with. So, um, and anyone who's attending the AML meeting next week will have an opportunity to thank him in person or at least virtually in person. So item C4, the COVID community roundtable update. Nothing. I just, again, want to thank all of the hard work of, that went into staff uh, on this and look forward to what we see coming forward with strategic direction. Uh, this group 
really worked hard to make sure that there was a large variety of voices heard from. There was uh, a youth all from uh, Nantara Shores High School. There was uh, seniors from Sandy Cove. Um, there was uh, representatives from more vulnerable populations. And it was, it was really great work and appreciate that staff took the, uh, took the initiative to make that happen. So thank you very much. Um, and we look forward to uh, creating from this both some short-term and long-term priorities that COVID has made um, uh, made us aware of in our community. C5, the uh, Wellington Street Official Plan Amendment. Seeing nothing. C6, the Cookstown Heritage Alteration Permit application. I'm, I'm gonna pull that just because I want to ask some staff some questions. C7, the Alcona Downs um, part lot control exemption. C8, the Innisfil Helping Hands program report to council. I just wanted to point out that um, uh, Mr. Kostinuk, uh, who, who did write the, the nice letter to council, um, is actually a very resident and, and he donated um, he donated to Innisfil to because um, of this council's leadership in uh, in their donation to help our residents. C9, uh, the ward boundary review. I'd like to have this pulled. C10, removing COVID prohibition against uh, yard and garage sales. I think we've already uh, kind of started that. So it's, we're, we're playing catch up a little bit with the bylaw. Okay, then our staff report, C1, the 2019 investment report. D2, the award for the culvert, uh, bridge culverts on Reef Boulevard. D3, the Connecting Communities Grant Funding. Uh, Councilor Feller? Uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you again. <clears throat> um, I, when I was uh, chair of the Goodfellow School Council, this was a big issue in regards to the safety of the children. The fact it's moving forward and uh, with the grants and everything, I think is a really positive step. Uh, it saves a lot of children uh, the issue of crossing 25th twice. Uh, maybe if we can convince parents not to park uh, north of 9th Line, they can actually walk their children to the front of the school from a safer location with... Uh, less traffic and less issues. So I'm really happy to see this going forward. I, I really do appreciate it on all levels. Thank you. Councilor, would you mind pulling that? Because I, again, I had another question for the engineering team on this. Or I can, doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna pull it. Yeah, I'll, okay, oh, sorry. <laughs> I apologize, I apologize. That's okay. D4, the uh, staff report regarding Ireton. Um, Councilor Fowler. Apparently, I have a lot to be thankful for tonight. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've got a lot of positive feedback from the residents uh, since we've got the signs up and the bylaw adapting, uh, being adapted. So again, uh, to everybody who put the time and effort in to make this happen before, this, this was put in place bef like two weeks before this meeting occurred. So again, the way, that, the way people have uh, really knuckled down in a time of COVID and really stepped up with the extended workloads that they have, it's, it's a lot of appreciative people. So again, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Fowler. E is bylaws and E1 is the bylaw for Craig Road. See no hands. Uh, F, correspondence for action. I did want to just take a moment, uh, if I could, to uh, recognize this recommendation and, uh, and suggest that if, uh, if council uh, wanted some illustrative examples um, of a working definition of anti-Semitism, um, to go to the website, the IHRA website, International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance website, Certainly with um, you know, a, a 
good population, uh, good Jewish population here in Cookstown or here in Innisfil, a historic one. And, and we have had some anti-Semitism issues uh, fairly recently. Um, if you recall, the police were investigating one um, that was down in, in, I believe, Ward 2, Mr. Councilman. Mm. So uh, I think this is uh, an important um, court piece of correspondence and recommendation. Okay, next are the G items. Anybody want to pull anything in the correspondence list? Nothing? I just wanted to point out one item. Again, it's in the Innisfil Public Library Board minutes about the um, about the elimination of the overdue fines. And it's we, you know, we were kind of ahead of the curve on this. It was a few um, boards that did it before us, but now I'm I'm reading about it all the time. So I think it's something that's really catching on. All right, um, so none of the G items. Uh, Councillor Davis, or Deputy Mayor Davidson. Thank you, Worship. I just wanna say that on G6, just a comment about the Simcoe Pride flag that today I sent a letter to council of a very disturbing um, letter from a member of the town of Innisfil, resident of the town of Innisfil regarding the, uh, calling it a homosexual uh, flag today. I think a person needs education that it's not just a homosexual flag, it's a flag of diversity and inclusivity. And uh, I think we need to do a little bit more in this town to stop this kind of emails coming to uh, council, because I know they do go through our ID department. So uh, council, you read the letter, so you still see we have a long way to go in this municipality to education, educating people on diversity and inclusivity, okay? So please take that letter to heart today and let's move forward in the right direction, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. So that is the end of our consent list and the items identified have been pulled. Uh, Councillor Nickel. Thank you, Worship, on my list. I did have uh, item C6 as well pulled. You are right. Yes, could we also add C6 to that? Madam Deputy Clerk. Thank you. Uh, so uh, mover and a seconder, Councillor Nickel, Councillor Van Berkel, all those in favor? That is carried. And uh, do we need a, there we are. Council resolve into committee of the whole, a mover and a seconder to resolve into committee. Councillor Fowler, Councillor Payne, all those in favor, that is carried. So our first item is item E1. And that was Councillor Nichol. Thank you, Worship. I, I don't have a seconder yet, but I just wonder if I can get it on the uh, table and just uh, amend two words on the, uh, the recommendation. Okay, well, why don't you put the two, amend the two words and then we'll see if somebody agrees to second that. Absolutely, just the item two, the council directs staff to develop an action plan. And council Arstati uh, suggesting that yes, she um, will second that for you. Other questions or comments on this? Uh, Councilor, uh, Councilor Payne? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, <clears throat> with being on the on the Heritage Committee, uh, this is this is really an important thing here because we we go around and assess some of these homes that are le being left vacant, and I think I've mentioned this before that you know if nothing is done to to look after the homes, uh, block them off or whatever, they're used as dumps. People are just taking in their garbage and they're throwing it on, and it's they're, they're breaking down the doors, they're going through the windows, they're just a mess. So it, it would, if there is some way that we can have this 
changed that that people aren't allowed, like they can't get into the properties to do the damage. And it, it's, it's really sad to see. And one of the questions that I had today, as a matter of fact, for like one of our uh, uh, managers was if, if we could look into it somehow that they, they and it's usually developers that buy the properties and they, they just leave it. If the developers could rent that house out to someone that needs a place to live and they could look after cutting the grass or shoveling the snow or whatever, it, at least someone's living in there. So it's, it's sort of a deterrent from anyone going and dumping their garbage. So if the house looks like it's being lived in, great. But when it's left vacant, then they just go in and wreck havoc. So I don't know what could be done. This is just sort of off the, the cuff here, but something really does have to be done to look after these, these uh, heritage homes. That's, that's all I have to say. Thank you, uh, Chair Payne. She's chair of that committee. I see uh, Mr. Vickers and Mr. Kane both uh, would like to respond. Uh, through your worship to Councillor Payne, um, you know, the, the general heritage uh, comment that you made and, and trying to be proactive in, and thinking of creative ways to protect these properties, uh, that's something that we can think about. We are um, in the process of presenting the, the new budget to council, one of the projects in there is a is a revisit and a refresh of the of the conservation district policies. Um, so it's certainly something where we can you know try and get creative and um, and do things to um, to protect these uh, properties proactively. Thank you, Mr. Vickers. Anything to add? Um, no, I, I I empathize tremendously with the. Heritage Committee, and it is a challenge uh, to look after these properties, and it's a balance between um, working with developers and trying to know what what's going on, and, and we're always trying to accommodate them, but their interests don't always align with the town, so it ends up being um, quite uh, uh, a challenge for us, but. We do take it seriously and uh, we're very open to looking at what other jurisdictions do and how they manage this because this isn't uh, this is a problem for jurisdictions around the GTA so um, I, th I think it'll be quite interesting to find out what has worked in other jurisdictions and what doesn't uh, work in other jurisdictions so we'll thank uh, you yeah thank you Thank you, Mr. Vickers. I, I agree. I see it happening uh, in many different municipalities. Uh, I call it uh, uh, demolition by neglect. Um, but uh, I saw some more hands and I'm sorry I've, I've not written them down. Was there other comments or questions? Councillor Payne, a follow up? Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, and thank you, uh, Barry, for you know being in contact with me and, and trying to this out, but I, I would really like to see if there's a if there's a way that we could deal with the with the developer that it's their responsibility to put guards up on the driveways to stop people from being able to go into the properties. I, is that something that we could look into, or is that just not feasible, Mr. Vickers? Mr. Kane, sorry, sorry, I I uh, pressed the wrong button there. Um, no, I think we'd have to. We could assemble uh, an inventory of vacant properties. It's hard to know who owns what, um, so I think there'd be a certain amount of work. Um, but but that's what it's going to take. It's going to take a certain amount of work to uh, to tackle this issue, and um, so that's what we'll do. And, and but we'll, I sorry, we'll Mr. Vickers. We'll come back to council and talk about what those options are and what they might cost. Sorry, Mr. Vickers, but I, I think the priority being on the ones that are designated her, uh, uh, designated heritage, yeah. particularly though that, that seems to be the um, the sore point. Uh, Councillor Orsatti. 
Thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to say that um, often uh, when the reports come in and with the recommendations, um, I think we need stronger statements. Um, I thank uh, Councillor Nickel for catching that, that uh, we need action statements and changing it from council considering directing staff, that it, uh, changing it to council direct staff, that we'll, we will get something done. Uh, because this has been in the heritage report uh, again and again. And um, I, I think uh, we need to uh, catch more of those um, in some of our reports. So thank you for the catch, uh, Councillor Nickel, and that'll please uh, Councillor Payne as well. Thank you, and, and I absolutely agree, but this, this report comes from the advisory committee, so they can't direct staff. It has to, so this is the advisory committee asking council to direct staff, but I, I totally understand your, your, um, where you're coming from there. Um, Councillor Nichol? No, you're done? Okay. I, I had uh, two quick comments on this. Um, the other one, uh, Councillor Payne, if you'd take back to the Heritage Committee, another one that I'm concerned about is the Hindle Manor, which, which is designated separately. That's the King Street South, but I don't understand. I, I don't recall what the number is, but it's called the Old Cook House or it's called Hindle Manor and it's part of a, a draft kind of subdivision in, um, in the south half. And then the only other comment I would make is the comments around the bridges on the trail, the uh, old railway bridges. Uh, my, other my only comment is, is the Heritage Committee is looking at you know, somehow trying to um, preserve them. And um, my comments to that would be that they've already been um, altered significantly over the years like there's not much part of the old railway bridge left I just don't know how much there is to preserve is my point but um, certainly that'll work its way through the staff process um, Go ahead. if I could say uh, that that was um, uh, spoken about at, at one of the meetings and I, I think even uh, it, what if the br br bridge was redone, if there was certain amount of, of wood or something that was in the original bridge that was put back into a new bridge, it would still have a little bit of the, the historical history in it. So it's not that we need to have the whole new bridge, but maybe just parts of it could be used um, for whatever. It's just trying to keep a little of the heritage into the bridge. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Payne. So hearing no other comments, um, could we, we have a mover and a seconder, do we? It was Councillor Nickel and Councillor Asadi. All those in favor of the recommendation is amended. That's carried. Next was item C1, and that was Councillor Asadi that uh, pulled that. Thank you. Um, and my uh, seconder to pull this item is Councillor uh, Bill Van Berkel. So I, I wanted to um, speak on item C1. We, we've heard from a lot of residents today that live in the area that are impacted the most. And I know that uh, some of the um, comments that uh, staff had pulled, uh, they did do um, pop-up surveys in the park before and, and held public open houses uh, in regards to the uh, afterwards um, on the interim control bylaw. And I just want to say that for those um, that have, have given comments that say that they like the uh, commercialism going down in the Soul Beach Road, they're not the ones that are impacted the most that live there, that have to live through it day by day. Uh, we've heard from residents today strong and from uh, letters and correspondence that we've received. Those that live closest to us, those that are having to live through the stress of having this interim control bylaw, of having their homes on the water um, uh, changed to uh, the proposed mixed use. And uh, when I look back at thinking of last term on council, and uh, the how hard staff worked 
uh, for the R Shore policy and how proud we all were of that, that it gave a teeth to a policy that protected the shoreline, that protected development and buildings uh, going on uh, Lake Simcoe. And we cared about that because it protected the lake, something that we all value and is important to us. And I don't understand that how all of a sudden when we worked so hard and staff did this and, and uh, we all agreed it was the best for the future of Innisfil, that now we want to change that to meet the needs of the town for the development to change five houses on the water. These are residential homes that were not in, if they were up further on Innisfil Beach Road against a, a commercial street, then residents know when they're buying uh, a home there or have a cottage that when it's against a farmland, when it's against a commercial street, that you live in a commercial corridor. But this wasn't a commercial corridor. This was an entrance to a park, to green space, to enjoying the water. And um, I am not in. Uh, I am not in favor of taking the five homes on the water. Um, I'm glad to see that staff, uh, in the many discussions that I'd had with them, have put in the option three to remove the five houses, which would allow them. When I uh, double checked with the planning staff, uh, that would allow them to uh, lapse and return to residential with no commercial development on the water. And uh, the, that would be adjusted in the official plan when uh, staff are doing other housekeeping amendments to the official plan to the county. And also, um, I just want to uh, just speak lightly of, as well about um, the other homes, uh, uh, speaking about those on the ones that are on the water. When I look at Wasega Beach, the town purchased all the stores that were there on the, the waterfront and they're has struggling to get tenants to, to fill those and problems with visitors and COVID and is creating pressures everywhere. The city of Barrie, they do not have commercial on the waterfront. They have residential towers, condos, and, and commercial is a street behind. So it does have a difference. Aurelia, I was up to Aurelia. And Aurelia, the same thing. So they have commercial going down the main street, but it's not on the water. They will have um, some heritage, they'll have plaques, they have parks and everything. And I think changing this um, is a detriment and to residents that have built their forever home. And as residents have, have said today, um, it's caused a lot of emotional stress and uncertainty. And I think that we owe those residents to protect those that are most impacted by this change. And that is the five on the water. Um, so, uh, you know, most of those residents were saying that they favor option three. Um, uh, Ms. Forgrave also spoke about option four, um, which is uh, letting all of it lapse on and the development from the 25th to, to the lake. That means that it goes back to residential and there is no commercial on there, um, which is also um, something that uh, I'd be interested to see uh, how the rest of council uh, feels about that. Um, I. I would not want to lose the opportunity to remove the five. That is the strongest uh, requirement that I have to protect the residents in my ward that are living through this every day uh, who want to build their homes. Uh, the first home on the water, um, the largest one um, that is right against the park, um, it, you know, I don't see uh, the space uh, between these homes uh, against a residential. There is no street, there is no division that other communities have that would space this. So there is a recommendation planning has reworked uh, this and I thank them very much for that, saying that they would put in three meters of dense forest uh, area uh, between the residential if it was uh, option two, but I, I don't see how that's possible because now you can't even now you've got to take away another house. Um, I'm strongly uh, leaning towards option three, 
um, in the recommendation. I'd like um, any votes on item C1, uh, asking uh, clerks to make this a recorded vote. And um, I'd also like to um, discuss uh, lapsing all of the commercial on the 25th with council. So I'll start the discussion there. So council, right now you are moving this recommendation that is on the floor now, which is, which is option one, isn't it? So you, you want to amend that if that's what you want to speak to. Do you want to help us out, Ms. Toma? Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Councillor Asadi provided us with a revised recommendation uh, that she had uh, asked to be available. Did you wish to put that on the floor, Councillor Asadi? I'm going to wait on that for a moment um, because um, I, I'm just going to wait on that. I, I wanted to pull this item for discussion. Um, there is, uh, staff have provided uh, three options uh, for council to vote on. Option one, uh, leaving it as the interim control bylaw is, uh, including the five on the water plus all the commercial. Option two was uh, leaving all the commercial on mixed use on the uh, uh, Innocent Beach Road from the 25th to Lakelands and uh, just in including the first three houses on the water and excluding the other two. The third option that staff provided for council uh, as an option was to remove the five on the water and keep the mixed use commercial from the 25th to the lake. So, um, yeah, we, 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 yeah, that's right. Except that the motion that is here in front of us now that you moved and Councillor Van Berkel seconded is option one, is it not? I'm gonna ask staff. Okay, so, so you, you wanted to put it on here, like I'm, I'm getting your comp from what your comments are. You just, you just put it, you moved it and seconded just to incite debate. Is that right, Councillor? Correct. Okay. okay. And then I do have a recommendation after debate. Do Okay, so but right now we're, we're debating option one. Okay, so it's not giving the options on here, it's just giving the recommendation. So, Mr. Keene, no can we see the options up on the screen? Mr. Right. Keene, can you? I'm just going to ask Mr. Keene to explain. Thank you, Worship. Yes, the, the motion that's um, currently before council or the recommendation that's currently before council speaks to option one. Um, the other, uh, the other two options, uh, specifically described in the report, and and the fourth option that was described by the delegation earlier, um, would uh, would not be included if this recommendation were to go forward as is. Okay, so I was uh, pulling this item to have it up for debate, but I am not agreeing to option one. Okay. So we'll we'll discuss option we'll discuss option one and then uh, we'll we'll see where the we'll see where the debate takes us. Okay, uh, so Councillor Waters. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I'm I'm open to listening to what uh, all the other councillors have to say. But first of all, I want to I want to thank uh, all the delegates uh, and speakers. Uh, I think um, uh, uh, Sally has has been very very. Uh, good to deal with, she's been polite, and I, I wish that more of our debates were less acrimonious and more, more civilized debates to allow for you know, fruitful discussion around this. So I wanna thank uh, for all of them for coming forward and, 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 and stating uh, their opinion on that. Uh, that being said, I'm a slightly um, of a different opinion. Um, uh, I've, I've been to several locations to see what, it, what type of opportunities are available for, for Innisfil. And I thought the whole reason that uh, planning staff came up with this is, is to give um, Innisfil some sort of economic drive, some way from some reason for people to come here. There was a lot of economics behind it. And there's also a lot of people as, as shown in the, uh, the survey that Sergio provided that you know, would like to see that downtown extended down to the, uh, to the waterfront. Uh, so I was, I think there is an opportunity 
to use this waterfront development as a point to develop other things. So the one, the one item that we've talked about, uh, I know Don and I talked about with uh, uh, planning staff, and I've also talked to it with, uh, with Sally, was uh, the Drake Devonshire in Wellington, Ontario. Uh, Drake Devonshire uh, in Welling Wellington was a sleepy little town, had no economic development, and one person with a very innovative idea came in with a boutique hotel uh, with wonderful food. And since that one development has gone in, uh, there has been at least minimum 10 different businesses have popped up in Wellington that were never there before. A brewery started there. The Drake Devonshire uh, was so busy, they had to start a motel uh, not too far from uh, the existing development. So that whole area has developed. And, and Sally was quite right that she pointed out that, you know, uh, that uh, uh, Prince Edward County is a new and developing um, uh, economic zone. And, but it, it took council way back when to say, you know, there's an opportunity here to see some sort of development. And I, and I, I think there is an opportunity to, to develop from the waterfront in terms of mm -hmm. either the marina, you know, uh, boat access from various communities. I think there's some innovative thinking that can be done around that. Um, I, I see it as an economic driver uh, to the lakefront. Right now we have the park and that's all we have. And if I was led to believe, you know, what other things that, you know, that Sally had mentioned, there's, there's, there's nothing in Innisville that people want to come and see. And I got on council because I wanted I wanted to help develop things that people would want to come here, why they would want to live here as a, a vibrant, innovative uh, community. And I think this single note has an opportunity to do that. I think combined with Friday Harbor and other opportunities around the lake, I think there's there's something there's something there. Uh, I think if we if we bury the whole idea, uh, that uh, we'll we'll never see that uh, come to to fruition. And 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 in this bill, we'll have missed an opportunity because once we, if we don't do this now, those properties will be developed, and it will be way too expensive later on. So, um, so, but I, I am I'm open to listening to you know uh, some of uh, Councilor Asadi's options in terms of what she's talking about there, uh, but I think there's an opportunity there with the park to drive some sort of economic development uh, into the town and make it much more vibrant uh, than it currently is now, and that's part of the reason as counselors, we have to think of the entire community. You know, we have to think beyond Lakelands. We have to think of the next 50 years in terms of what we want Innisfil to become. And that's why I got involved because I, I wanted to make some changes over the next 50 years because I'm only going to be here for 10 or 20. And so I want to see my children and other people's children have a, a, a good life here that don't have to drive back and forth to Toronto like I did for 30 years. So that's uh, my point. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Waters. You mentioned Prince Edward County, and uh, it isn't a coincidence, well, I guess it is a coincidence, that our economic development catalyst actually was the um, motivation uh, and, the, uh, and the brains behind uh, the Prince Edward County development. Uh, Councillor Fowler. Uh, I'm, I'm reading this and I'm sorry, Councillor Waters. I have to severely disagree with you on some things here. Uh, the fact that people don't, people are not going to come to town. I've been doing beach runs every weekend for the past month, and I've been talking to residents at every beach from Maple View down to Innisfil Beach Park. We close down these parks. We close down the park early every time it's a hot day. People come to our town no matter what. They still show up no matter what. In this particular scenario, when it comes to the five lake land properties, I, I, I don't feel right about it. I mean, what we're doing, talking about in the master plan, the beach master plan, is putting up docks and whatnot in the area. So we're taking an area with limited space that people without docks are already accessing to, accessing to the point that people who come to town and people who live in town are unable to access the beach. We turn away five, six, seven hundred uh, cars a day. Like that's not something that means that our town is not being uh, utilized. I, I understand the strip of the 25th. I understand the idea behind it. That, but when it comes to Lakelands, I can't see the purpose. Leave the houses be, let the people have their homes. If you're going to expand, use the existing uh, commercial space that is not being utilized, create a, a, a district, create a theme, create an idea for the town that draws in a design purpose. Let, let people, let people create what they wish to see there. We have the space to do it without taking people's or rezoning people's existing properties. 
and we can do it for far cheaper. I, I'm sorry, I don't agree with the five houses on Lakelands. I, I just, I can't go with that. Uh, I saw some other hands. Councillor Van Berkel. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I would have to agree with both Councillor Rosati and uh, Ken. Um, about, I guess it's about 20 years ago, there was a restaurant on the block down the road from, from where it is now, that property. Uh, and uh, it's not no longer there because it wasn't feasible. I bought the property, I know this. And when I went to the, I bought the parking lot across the road too, and I built three houses on it. And when I wanted to do something there, somebody came along and said, you know, we would like to build another restaurant there. With, and this restaurant had 10 rooms above so people could stay. The town was adamant that it had to be residential at the time. It couldn't be a resident. There, there was no way that we could put anything commercial there. It had to be residential. So I don't know what happened over the last 10 or 15 years. But I agreed with the town at that time that it should be residential. And I agree with Kenneth and with Donna that those five units or six or seven units, whatever they are, should stay residential. That, that's what the lakefront is. There is no lakefront available for people to build cottages. I mean, why, why would we take that away from people? Why? I mean, that, if, if we're gonna develop the commercial on from the 25th to Lakelands, that's one thing. I don't agree with that 100% either because I think that you know whoever lives there now there shouldn't be a clause in there that they can't add an addition or renovate their houses. They should be able to live there for as long as they want and do whatever they want to their house. You know, not build new ones, but they should they should be allowed to upkeep their homes so that it's, you know, to, to a standard that we all like. But as far as the properties on Lake Lance, I am dead set against that. I'm dead set against turning that into commercial. I, I there is no way that you would get my vote in that in 100 years. Any other questions or comments? Councillor Nickel? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, obviously, this has been a long journey to get here, going through our shores and the Parks Master Plan. And I appreciate and understand the vision for option one. But with the comments received, I've been thinking about option two and three again, because this is just a vision and there is no short term impact to any decision that we make even tonight. Think about how long ago past councils had to make the commitments to begin shaping Ennis Beach Park. You know, to me, a Port of Aurelia right on the Trent Severn Waterway is with walkable amenities would make a great destination. I think this is a great vision. And as the majority, majority of the opposition has been for the five waterfront properties, I wonder if this, at this time, whether option three works while directing staff to address these in the next official plan, as this is a long reach plan, but not something that's gonna impact the area in the near future. Thanks. Thanks, Councillor. Councillor, or sorry, Deputy Mayor Davidson. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm glad to hear the deputations that came before Council tonight. I agree with them. I actually am not seeing Councillor Asadi's uh, recommendation, but I think clear the, the five homes on Lakelands needs to be removed. They're private homes. Leave them that way. Protect our shores as it is. And I liked... Uh, Ms. Forgrave's comment on option four. She did a great presentation showing how much vacant land has been sitting there for the last eight years that no developer is in a hurry to build on. So nothing's gonna happen east of the 25th, trust me, for another 10 years. Friday Harbor, when they built, couldn't find enough waterfront to build their harbor, so they went inland. And when Friday Harbor even went inland, from what I concur, two residences only were taken down. One was a farm where the golf course is now, and there might have been a resident, I think there was a residence inside the marina at that time. So there is no more waterfront available for entertainment or whatever you want, unless you want to spend a billion dollars. So the idea of putting more docks in at the beach is crazy. Uh, the beach is at maximum capacity. I think we found that out through COVID-19. So I'm looking forward to see Donna Councillor Asadi's recommendation and hopefully it clears those five homes from this plan and goes with option four, which means uh, putting commercial where it belongs, not in amongst other residential homes, 
and having us to widen that road, spend millions of more dollars to widen it, to enhance it, to be commercial. That's a whole other side that we haven't even seen here in this proposal tonight in front of us. So, uh, Councillor Sadi, I look forward to your recommendation and we'll take it from there. Thank you. Councillor Ices. Yeah, thank you, Worship. I uh, am very familiar with, with Innisville Beach Road. Uh, I've lived there for many years and our farm is on there. And uh, I've seen it develop. It, it, it really is, it's, it's a microcosm for Innisville where we went from being cottages uh, to being residential. And now we're trying to develop a downtown that, that we can be proud of, promote commercial businesses. And, uh, and that's a good thing to strive for. I, I have to agree with all the other councillors that I don't believe that this is the right place to do that. I would go a step further and say that option four is the appropriate one. Uh, it's my, my personal experience with that section is uh, um, my grandparents, uh, they, they immigrated from from Holland and started to farm. And as when my grandparents retired, they needed to get away a little bit and they bought one of the cottages um, along Innisfil Beach Road right across from the park. So uh, I'm very familiar what it's like down there when it's you know not a crazy summer weekend and that's that's most of the time. It's a it's a quiet place. The park is green space that you can enjoy and you know our, our family and extended family spent a lot of time uh, at that cottage. So for us to um, you know go to option three and change the zoning there, we're we're going we're going we're likely going to see the same thing that we see west of the 25th that uh, Miss Forgrave very succinctly showed us where. You know, developers or uh, speculators, which will probably be, will gobble up these properties. They will downgrade, um, and it just will deteriorate that whole area. And uh, I, I don't think we need more of that in Innisfil. So, uh, you know, those are my comments. Uh, I think uh, to put a downtown at the end of the road. It's, it's so hard to get to. Um, if I want to go to a business from, say, travel from the town hall to the 25th side road, there's right now there's four or five lights, there's a school zone. If I, if I need something for my business, it, it's a toss up whether I go to South End Barrie or if I go down to there. So uh, to put more commercial further away from people getting there it just it doesn't make much sense to me so th those are my comments and and I I will be uh, in favor of option four thank you any other comments uh, Councillor Payne thank you your worship um, this is a good report but if, I, I honestly can't see that that happening at the end of the road you leave the five houses and nobody, like there has been no comments about like, how, how do we save Lake Simcoe? Lake Simcoe is in a mess as it is right now. And if we put that down on, on, and the, take the five houses away and you start putting up buildings, it, it's gonna make it so much worse, so much worse. So we've got a big, a big job of cleaning up Lake Simcoe as it is without adding this to it. And, and I agree, like maybe there should be a restaurant somewhere, but you put it on the other side of the, on the, uh, the north side of, of the 20, or the uh, uh, Lakelands, or no, not like in this Phil Beach Road, where the, where the police station is around that area. And, or put it in the park, put a restaurant in the park. So uh, people go in there, give them a, a place to go and they can go down to the beach and enjoy it but just leave the homes alone. I'm not in favor of that at all. Thank you.
Any other comments? Mr. Kane, did you want to answer some questions for us, please? Um, the first one, uh, either you or um, someone from uh, planning. Um, can you just for a talk about the issue about the vacant lands in Innisfil and like the the idea of the vacant lands that are west of the 25th. There was a lot of talk thank about that tonight. Yes, thank you, Worship. And um, and we appreciate what is what is seen along there. Um, but uh, we think there should also be an appreciation for the amount of work that has gone in um, a large number of those properties. Um, particularly those um, on the north side of Innisfil Beach Road uh, in the vicinity of Jans Boulevard or east of Jans Boulevard um, are actively in, um, in development discussions. And uh, in fact, the one at the corner, the largest development on the corner of Innisfil Beach Road um, and Jans Boulevard is, is imminently about to sign a development agreement to, to set um, development in motion. So, you know, it, it takes a while to go through the processes and to, um, and to assess these applications uh, and to try and build that main street uh, that I think we all collectively want to achieve. Um, so I, I can assure council that there are active applications and inquiries taking place along in this Blue Beach Road. Um, these haven't slowed down in light of recent events uh, and they're unlikely to slow down, you know, depending on what the future economic certainty looks like, um, which none of us know, but uh, certainly, you know, in the traditional sense as population grows, there will be more and more pressure um, to develop and, and provide a complete community along the main street. And, and that's part of, you know, why, you know, with the commercial land needs study and, you know, those steps that successive councils have now taken um, to work towards this long-term vision um, is to provide for that main street connection to the lake, which is a very rare thing in this province. You know, we've recently been talking to tourism experts and resort experts who, you know, uh, shared with us, you know, the limited opportunities for, you know, communities that are directly connected to the waterfront. Um, and certainly, you know, through the official plan process um, and, and through multiple other engagement processes and in Swedish Park, you know, we're hearing this, um, this not demand, but we're hearing certainly from our residents the desire for an engaging sense of place and this place-making concept. Um, to be there, you know, not for the tourists that use the beaches, you know, in earnest um, for 10 weeks a year, but for those residents over four seasons to, to have a place. Um, and that's always been a part of, you know, the official plan is to build a good place for our residents first. Um, and if the tourists come, then we will um, we'll embrace that and accept the economic development from them. But in the meantime, we're not getting a lot of economic development return from that. Uh, and we'll continue to, um, to build on the sense of place for our residents and, um, and looking for opportunities for that longer term vision. Uh, sorry, Worship, I wasn't aware of any, I'm not sure of any other questions. I didn't jot any down, but I'm certainly here to answer any additional ones if there are any. There was lots of opinions, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Kane, not a lot of questions, but I'll invite now any members of council who did have any questions of, of uh, Mr. Kane or Mr. Pierce, uh, Councilor Waters. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, I I guess I don't have really any questions except that, you know, do we have an indication of what type of uh, dollars and cents the park, because all I hear is anecdotal information that we have thousands of visitors every year who come to the park and they don't spend any money in the town. They come, they bring their own barbecues, they bring their own food, and they don't spend any money here. And, you know, even the, the local restaurants, the stores will tell you that they don't spend money. So the idea of this economic plan uh, was the idea of developing something that was more long term uh, that would provide money to you know commercial uh, uh, owners to it would provide jobs that was I thought that was the impetus of this between a combination of uh, residential and commercial along the beach around the beach area so that there was that 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 commingling that would go on between uh, the visitors of the park and that that strip so I, I thought it was you know an economic opportunity to make something special out of Innisfil. Otherwise, if you if you take the the closeness to the park, all we're going to ever have is thousands of visitors that our residents don't want, who don't spend any money here. So, you know, my long term vision was, you know, let's slowly reduce the number of people who come from out of town into our park by just basically creating resistance. You know, allowing pushing them away from the park and giving visitors or giving homeowners the access to the park that they want, but they're going to want to have more. So the idea of, of some shopping opportunities, some uh, eat, uh, food eating opportunities was to develop that as a residential community 
benefit as opposed to having visitors who come up here, they don't spend any money, they make a mess of our beaches. So the idea was to basically provide some other economic opportunities to allow that to happen. So uh, other, without that, you know, we're going to have, I think we'll have commercial business that looks like Bayfield right down to the 25th and it'll look no different than the other town, uh, unfortunately. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, questions of um, staff? Uh, Deputy Mayor Davidson? We have consular studies recommendation put up so we can see it. And I think we've heard from all of council already. So I'd like to take a look at it, please. So first we're going to just make sure that all anybody's questions are answered and then we'll make sure everybody has an opportunity to, uh, to comment some more. Is there any other questions of, of council or of staff? Uh, Councillor Van Berkel. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> One of my fears is, and I, you know, if we're talking about a commercial downtown, why did we ever allow houses on the eight line? Like, you know, we've got the Canadian Tire Plaza and then we've got Sobeys a mile apart. We've got, you know, we've got on the other side, we got no frills and then we got, you know, some commercial a mile farther up the road and we have houses in between. I mean, how is it ever going to become a downtown? So is that what's going to happen down at the bottom too? Are we going to have like some commercial, some residential? I don't, I don't understand. Even leave it, leave, it, leave it all residential or, or make that strip all commercial. I mean, the planning on Ennisville Beach Road is so poor over the years. And, I, and I'm afraid that I was probably a part of that. You know, when the golf course, when they took it out, that should have been a commercial strip all along. And it's Beach Road, Crossroads, the same thing. Maple Lane, the same thing. I mean, you know, they allowed stores and then you got to walk a mile to get to the next store, another mile to get to the next store. You know, it, I'm, I I'm, really, a, I'm really frustrated. I'm, I'm, I, I hear know. a question in there somewhere, Mr. Kane. Thank you, Worship, uh, through to Council Member Berkeley. Yeah, the challenge of, you know, there's, Innisville has a different challenge for, creating its main street than, than what other communities do. So, you know, because, you know, we were, you know, we were a cottage community first, um, you know, we inherited a very disjointed main access point to the town. And it's, you know, probably the one thing harder than maintaining a downtown these days uh, is trying to create one from scratch. So, you know, I don't think there's any fault in previous councils that, you know, at the time we've been working with, you know, that, that circumstance we've been dealt with. So, you know, in the meantime, more recently, you know, particularly as we're in a growth phase, um, you know, those things that look miles apart today, um, you know, are going to be quite uh, helpful for us to establishing our complete community tomorrow. So, yes, there are gaps today. You know, nothing. You know, the bulldozers aren't rolling in down in Isle Beach Road tomorrow, east of the 25th by any stretch. Um, this is, you know, you know, we're not at the beginning of this process, but we're certainly well advanced in this process of of earmarking uh, an opportunity to continue to reinforce the main street that we have and the one that we want to see successful um, so that it is there for our residents um, and not necessarily the tourists, but for our residents because, you know, we're planning for the next 30,000 residents right now that are coming and, and more. Um, so how do we do that and, and create um, and reinforce that main street that we would all like to have? Well, maybe we should create a downtown somewhere else. Our Innisfil is a big, Big town. So um, I don't think we can forget how far we've come. And um, Councillor Van Berkel, both you and I were on council when we decided that we were going to accelerate the Main Street project, which was, if you recall at the time, uh, no sidewalks up and down Innisfil Beach Road, open ditches, uh, no street lighting. And that's when we put the big culvert uh, down the main street and then started to, you know, work on it phase by phase uh, and, and, and created that uh, main street look as far as the lights and everything are concerned. Um, does it happen overnight? No, it doesn't. It's, it's a long term vision. I would invite um, the next time you're traveling uh, Castle Arsati to go to uh, the, my hometown. Uh, where I was born and brought up, which is Port Perry. 
in Port Perry, you'll you'll come down uh, a main street uh, with the traditional downtown on both sides. And at the very end of that street is a pier and a dock. And there's always, you know, four or five boats in the dock and a very successful, uh, prominent downtown with lots of shops, gift shops, dress shops, uh, little restaurants, boutiques, um, all along both sides of Queen Street. And then a park uh, beside that uh, pier. And then on the other side of the park, on Water Street, on the other side of the road, uh, an, an ice cream parlor, uh, another restaurant, some more shops. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a vision uh, of some sort. You could also use Lindsay, you could lose Fenland Falls, you could lose a lot, you could use a lot of uh, kind of that vision. Um, having said that, um, I'm sympathetic with the, um, with the uh, people on Lakelands. Um, I, um, I feel for the people, uh, the, at least the, the first house on Lakelands that is very much uh, interested in, uh, in moving his project forward. Uh, but uh, I am sympathetic for that. I'm, I'm strongly in favor of developing the, um, the mixed use on the um, south side of Innisfil Beach Road. Uh, I think that one of the big problems with, that we have with our park is yes, we have busy days, but uh, this summer particularly because of COVID and because of the heat, but you, you could count on two hands the number of crazy busy days that we have in that park in a, in a, in a year because people are only, and it's only crazy busy on a Saturday, Sunday or a holiday Monday in, when it's hot and when it's summer. The rest of the time that park is so underutilized uh, by both our residents and uh, anyone else. And part of that reason is because if you do want to get a coffee or you do want to uh, want to sit down and and with a with a book and a, a cup of tea, you you can't. You have to go boot it all the way uh, up to uh, C W Coops or Twenty Fifth Side Road or Tim Hortons um, to do that. I also think that um, having the um, the mixed use there will make it more vibrant. I heard tonight. First of all, that there, uh, I'm surprised because I always get calls from one gentleman on the street saying how crazy busy the traffic is. And then today <laughs> I'm getting people telling me there's no traffic down there. So I'm getting definitely mixed messages that way. But I, I do believe that um, that option three is a step in the right direction. And again, doesn't, uh, doesn't kick anybody out of their homes, doesn't render any, and to be honest, many of those places, particularly the few that are closest to the water, are are ready for redevelopment. You know, I'm I'm might be being a bit cruel to anybody who's there, but they're not. You know, they ne it needs to be nicer than it is there, and I think that a uh, mixed use in those areas would would be in the future a place that we'd want to go to. Uh, the only other one comment I wanted to make, and I think it was to uh, Mr. Knox, the planner, is that um, I, I um, would challenge any councillor in any municipality in Ontario to go through an official plan amendment and, and then automatically know exactly what what each change was in what area that's that's not what an official plan amendment is uh, or sorry an official a whole new official plan review not in a specific amendment um when it's an amendment yes it's it's targeted and and you're you're concentrating on that area but when you're working on an official plan for the entire town of Innisfil uh yes I am I'm not ashamed to say that you could point me to a piece of property on the 20th side road in the sixth line and I might not know that that was affected in, in an official plan review so um, just wanted to have that conversation because I didn't want I, I've heard it about six times now and I just want to make sure that people don't understand it's not because we're not paying attention it's because there's different levels of zoning and when you're looking at a big picture plan an official plan for the entire town of Innisfil you do not get down to, well, how does that affect the property on 
Simcoe Street or on George Street. So those are my comments and I did see a few more signs. So we'll we'll start going around again. Councilor Arsati and then Councilor Davidson. Um, just a, a question for planning staff. Um, it's, it's, I guess the difficulty is, I mean, I, I see their picturesque vision, um, but um, when you have uh, for the mixed use uh, going down Innisil Beach Road from the 25th to Lakelands, I'm going to exclude the five houses. Um, the, how do you control who the tenants are? that go in these, because unless the town owns it, we have no control that it's gonna be a lovely boutique and a nice coffee shop, that it won't be a variety store, a dollar store, a bars all like on Dunlop Street that has a lot of problems. Uh, it's nice to sit in the outside restaurants there and their patios, but at nighttime, they have a lot of issues. So how do you control that? You do have in your plan an architectural uh, design that uh, would be required for that area. I appreciate uh, the, uh, that going in, but I'm going to start with it, with that question because I don't, you know, you can have a dream, but it doesn't become that. It becomes something else. So, Mr. Kane, yep. or Mr. Pierce. <clears throat> Thank you uh, to the councillor through the mayor. Uh, you know, you're, you're correct in saying that uh, we don't have that fine of grain around specific businesses on those, on those properties. Uh, we do have control through the zoning bylaw uh, permitted uses to say which type of uses can go in. And we do have control over uh, matters of urban design and architectural design. Beyond that, we would turn to um, other municipal enforcement um, um, other bylaws essentially to control issues of noise or um, crowding or traffic issues or um, of matters of that kind. But it is limited to uh, broad broad strokes of uses, what, what is or what isn't permitted there. And then the other question is, um, because uh, I think it was a comment um, from the developer that's looking at where the McConkey walk up heritage house is on Innisil Beach Road, stating that, you know, it, it was difficult for them to put the stores in. They're more concerned with the residential, but now they have to find tenants. So it makes me think that it's more difficult for developers. They would like to build some residential and maybe have four story, three story residential and sell it as luxury condos along that point. But it's difficult to find tenants. And now is, is a great example. It's, it's very unusual, but um, you know, uh, we hear of many places that have been in families for generations that now have to close and, you know, and beyond COVID, uh, when we were doing the uh, first impressions uh, community, I can't even remember what it was, uh, Mayor Dolan, uh, you and I went around to some towns, first impressions uh, of different communities, and you saw empty storefronts, for lease, for rent, for sale. And it does feel like the death of a town. It's, it's a fear of, of having that. So from a development side, um, are we getting feedback uh, from developers who are looking at properties on Innisfil Beach Road that it's difficult for them to put in the retail commercial space that you're requiring and are they looking to make those spaces smaller or have they requested uh, to have it um, residential only? Mr. Pierce? Uh, yep. Thank you for the question. Any? Sorry, just quickly, I'm just looking to see if anybody from economic development is on the call tonight. I'm not seeing anyone. Go ahead, Mr. Pierce. Um, okay, I'll try my best. There are uh, quite a few questions in there. Uh, I, I think the first thing I would say is uh, individual developers certainly have areas of uh, uh, special expertise. Some are maybe more focused on residential development, others on strictly commercial. So. Uh, their individual capacity will vary. Um, I would say, based on my experience doing uh, many of the site plans on Innisfil Beach Road, that I've actually seen the commercial components driving a lot of the uh, of the developments. They are the first tenancies to fill in, um, at least on one major one that was highlighted tonight. Um, 
Um, and, you know, in my conversation with economic development, uh, the economic de development team, uh, they pointed out that last year they had over 100 space related uh, inquiries from businesses. Um, so that was in 2019. And that the, the main issue is that there is no commercial space. Um, so they're turning people away actively. Um, you know, the, the sort of shorter term or medium term effects of COVID-19, we will not know. Um, but I, uh, I think we can expect a, you know, a turnaround at some point within, uh, within the shorter medium term. Thank you. And I did, I did uh, remember, <coughs> excuse me, Mr. Taylor coming to council with um, that that um, proposal that he'd sent out that had the mock up of the street, if you remember that, where it was like a drone video that went down the street and back. Um, but my final comment, and then I'll I'll stop talking, is is I just I invite council to first of all look look at for the long term, not not be short-sighted, not think about, you know, what's going to be there tomorrow, but, you know, the long-term look of, of Innisfil. And also to think of Innisfil the way people who live outside of Innisfil think of Innisfil. We often get comments from other municipalities um, saying what great opportunities we have and, you know, our partnership with the DMZ and all of our innovative projects and aren't you guys lucky and to don't look at it as if you know we're not good enough or uh or we can't make it happen or you know it should happen everywhere else but not us because we don't have a, a traditional downtown we i think we do ourselves or i i might say we might we might be doing a few naysayers um a service but I think we'll be doing the town of Innisfil itself a disservice if we don't think that we have a strong, vibrant future for our economic core. I think, I think fundamentally um, we have an issue. If we don't believe that long term we're going to have this um, this we're going to grow in a way that we want to grow and we're going to grow um, in a in a place making in a place where people will want to congregate and walk and if 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 somebody have told me i don't know a few years when i first first on council that that trailer that was the library um, the Katie Jan's trailer that was the library would would now be the library that we have down there. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe it. And then the only reason, and you all remember, it was an election issue. Oh my goodness, the library, what a waste of money. What are we doing? We shouldn't have a library like that. And now we're the pride of North America, our library system. So I just invite you not to be too um critical or or to to think to think that yes we are we can and we will develop and be vibrant and have a very vibrant future ahead of us i feel like i i'm a preacher now so sorry okay uh questions or comments i saw some more signs uh councillor our De <laughs> deputy mayor davidson have been waiting for a long time my fault Thank you. I'm going to put a sign up in front of your computer, Deputy Mayor. Sorry. Get that one straight. Okay. Uh, currently, uh, Sabo Beach has just made an announcement that all their shops down there are not doing well. They're not sustainable, and they're looking at probably building some type of mall with all of their little stores in it because the boutiques are not working and they're not making ends meet. As for our economic core, I think our economic core is the 400 corridor and the sixth line to the eighth line is where we really need to focus. And I think uh, with uh, Mr. Ellen Pearson, that uh, we can control what goes into those areas or we can pick and choose what kind of retail outlets may go in those that particular commercial zone. Right now we got a pot place going uh, on the corner of the 25th and it is still Beach Road. So people can go pick up their gummy bears or whatever, go to the new town square and sit and look at the stars like their new planets 
and we might get another pot store just outside of the park where they can go look at the lake and think they're sitting on uh, the ocean. So we don't really have regulations in place to stop people from uh, doing whatever they want once they retail, they buy the retail space or rent the retail space. Once again, I'm asking for Councillor Asadi's recommendation to be put up on the screen so council can look at it. As uh, Councillor Nickel would often say, and I've been stopped by him for debating before, that we've discussed this long enough. Let's see the recommendation and let's see what council wants to go on it. Thank you. So I would invite um, Councilor Arsati to put up whatever she wants, or if you have a resolution you'd like to put up, Deputy Mayor, please feel free to do so. And I, um, I have, I have my weekly meeting with Mayor Jackson from Sobel Beach uh, Friday, so I'll, uh, I'll be sure to ask her about those uh, comments. And then finally, regarding cannabis, it was this council who had the option to either choose to opt in or opt out, and this council chose to opt in. And uh, Councillor Sadi, did you want to respond to de the Deputy Mayor? Councillor Ices had put up a sign to ask some questions. I'd like to give them that opportunity. Great. Councillor Ices. Uh, thank you, Worship, and Councillor Sadi. Uh, I, I did have a question, and, and, and I hope it adds to this. Um, uh, and, and this is um, maybe a bit of a history lesson for some councillors on uh, plans for Innisfil Beach Road. I can't remember exactly what year it was, but council at that time decided that they wanted to make uh, downtown Innisfil, uh, this is my version, um, more of a placemaking spot. They wanted to put a, a boulevard down the middle of Innisfil Beach Road. We were going to put lanterns and lights and planters and flowers and uh, benches, and we we're going to make it a walkable downtown. Um, and that that never really took off. Um, we we know Innisfil Beach Road is not walkable. It's as Councillor Van Burkle has already stated. The planning of it is just all over the place and it's very difficult to fix that. We do not have the choice of what businesses go there. Um, so I guess my question is, uh, could I have a bit of a history lesson on why that didn't work? We, we had a nautical theme picked out, the council did. Um, the boulevard was a disaster for some businesses because now all of a sudden cars couldn't go left when they wanted to. and and, and use those businesses. So um, it seems like we're doing the same thing again. We have this vision that isn't practical, uh, putting a downtown way at the end of a dead end street. So uh, that, that's my question. What, what's the history behind um, when we tried it before and it didn't work? Mr. Kane, you weren't around then, but do you know any of the history? I'll tell you, I voted against the medians. <laughs> it was a disaster. <laughs> yes, Your Worship, through to Council ICs. Yes, the uh, I was around long enough, or I've been around since, to uh, to hear about the meetings. And I think you know I came when they were, you know, relatively new, and change is always difficult. Um, in terms of you know the you know the dog's breakfast, I guess we can call that right now. That you know reflects part of Innisfil Beach Road. You know, it's as I said, it's an area in transition. So you know we can look at the success of of um, of some of the policies to date. Um, there has been about 35 acres of land developed along Innisfil Beach Road uh, since 2010. Um, and that's no small task in a community of our size. So it is happening and it's continuing to happen. And, you know, much like you see right now, hundreds of millions of dollars being spent um, in York region along the Davis drives uh, and along other uh, main thoroughfares that, you know, you're wondering what's going on? Like, why are was, you know, why is all this infrastructure money being spent um, in these areas when, you know, there's an equally a dog's breakfast in some of those areas. And the, and the reality is this is part of the long-term planning process, um, particularly on the infrastructure side, uh, like we've done in this week road. So, you know, we, you know, council had the wisdom to make that initial investment um, and to, you know, uh, gear ourselves towards the walkable community. And then, you know, obviously the jigsaw pieces have to fall into place uh, over that longer term that we talked about tonight. So, you know, we're seeing, you know, the new buildings that are going up and that will be going up will be much closer to the street. And like I said before, it's, 
it's a difficult prospect starting a main street from scratch. Um, you know, we don't have buildings in excess of 100 years old, you know, in our other villages like Cookstown, for example, that really frame the main street. So for us to do that is, is going to take some time. Um, and, you know, let's not forget, you know, there's public support for this too, right? So, um, you know, I certainly respect and appreciate, um, you know, the, the work and effort that's gone in uh, along Lakelands Avenue. And that's why, you know, despite um, allegations of not, you know, um, consulting with the community or engaging with the community, we're certainly having healthy debate tonight. And that's a great thing. But, you know, through the Inspiree Truck Master Plan and through a variety of other processes, uh, including the OP update, you know, placemaking and connections to connections to the water and the interface in Inswick Park um, was a resounding theme throughout those processes. So uh, here we are tonight, you know, trying to implement uh, that support that we saw, you know, recognizing local um, local circumstances like Lakelands that may not, you know, fit that template as well and, and respecting that, um, but, you know, incrementally uh, trying to, to get us to that vision that will uh, coming back to Councillor Icy's comment, you know, continue to cement uh, and reinforce uh, a main street that uh, that hopefully we can all be proud of. Follow Thank up, you. Councillor Icy. Yes. Yeah. I, I guess I, I still didn't really get the reason why that vision, which um, from a planning perspective made sense, to focus your efforts to make that downtown where between where the, the Canadian Tire is all the way down to the 25th. Did we not wait long enough? Or was it the timing off? Uh, so, so the town spent a bunch of money to make it a placemaker. It didn't work. What makes us think it will work this time? I'm gonna so take a stab at that okay. first, only sure. because, so, so it was, before my time, when uh, the growth center of Innisfil became Alcona, that happened before I was on council. Um, then what happened was the uh, province made it a designated settlement area. Um, and that is when that street design was um, developed between, uh, uh, like you said, that, that ship theme where they have the building, that one pumping station that's got the glass in the front of it. Um, so just it was um, the infrastructure put in. In fact, what we always get criticized for always and what would have happened had we have done it the way staff had wanted to do it was it was going to be like over 10 year project, right? Phase, 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 phase. And it was council of the day who just said, nope, we wanted to rip that band-aid off quick and we wanted to get that whole infrastructure done at once. We're always getting criticized for, you know, building the houses and then putting in the infrastructure, right? We, we hear that all the time. How come you didn't build the street first? How come you let the houses go in and then you build the street? Like on the seventh now, which is what we're hearing, right? So the, the idea at the time, Councillor, was to put the infrastructure in first. If you look at, uh, at Mr. Kane's example of Davis Drive in Newmarket and the property they had to acquire and the retaining walls they had to put in to do that infrastructure after the development instead of before, um, I think it's, it's more cost effective. But again, it was, um, it was Council of the Day's decision to accelerate that particular project. Anything okay. to add, Mr. King? Uh, and, and just briefly, Your Worship, thank you for, for clarifying that. I think, you know, the question of ha has, has it worked yet, is, you know, I don't think we can call time a death yet. This is, this is a work in progress. You know, we've seen, um, I think Your Worship, you referred to the video that ACDEV has done that shows what this can do at full build out. Um, and the reality is, you know, those steps that council's taken to date, you know, the mixed use two zone, you know, the infrastructure investment, you know, the amount of development activity, although not apparent completely in the ground, um, but certainly there are some recent developments there, but the amount of activity right now that the planning department's experiencing, you know, through the site plan review process um, and customer inquiries and, and act dev inquiries, you know, is demonstrating that there is something there that is, you know, garnering the attention of the development community. These things take time. Um, and, 
you know, we're trying to stay one step ahead and reinforce that momentum that we've been working, you know, I could almost say decades on to, um, to try and achieve. Okay, uh, Councillor Waters. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, I've lived in Innisfil now close to 35 years. And when the uh, in this No Frills Plaza went in, I went, oh no. I says, here we go, we're gonna be Bayfield all over again. Bayfield Street is one of the ugliest looking streets uh, that, I, that I know of. And every other town has the same thing. And I thought, oh no, here we go. We're gonna make the same mistake. We're gonna be all plazas up and down in this field beach road. What type of community is that? We're gonna be driving everywhere. It's just, it's, it's, it's ugly as sin. What's nice is when you have those, and then the town had a rethink and thought about having a downtown community that was walkable and livable. And that's where we started moving things a bit closer. I thought there was an opportunity to, to save the main, main street of uh, Innisfil so that it did look, uh, that it was enjoyable and it was inviting and that kind of stuff. Plazas are not inviting. They're, they're designed for the car. We know the cars are going, you know, in 20 years, cars are gonna be not a thing in the past. They're gonna look quite a bit different. And we were gonna develop something that was livable and walkable and look nice, not not Bayfield. And so I, I was really pleased to see that when we developed that core, that the new core of what we were going to do, it does take time. And I understand everyone's frustration that you know it's not exactly what we want, and we can't control everything. Sometimes you have to take, have come up with a vision and have a leap of faith that you know it's it's going to come out like we hope. And, and there's going to be stumbles, and it, it may not be exactly what we plan, but it's going to be much better than Bayfield. Uh, and that's what I was kind of hoping for. Um, but if, if Bayfield is what everyone wants, uh, you know, that's what we're going to have if we're just going to uh, allow willy-nilly development along there without residential development combined with commercial. That's my side. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've had great debate, uh, but I think all these poor people on the line who are uh, waiting anxiously for, uh, for a decision, um, and I think staff as well, I think we should... Uh, we should uh, get moving. So we have a motion on the floor. Uh, do we have uh, any amendments to the motion? Councillor Waters. Uh, could someone please explain to me what number two means? I, I don't, I have no idea what I'm voting on with that, that amendment. Is that, that, does that mean we're dropping everything from uh, the 25th uh, East or uh, what are we doing here? Sorry, I have fruit flies in my office. <laughs> I, I have to say that I'm confused as well, because if this is my amendment, I don't understand it. So I, I just, um, my amendment is to, and maybe this is just the fancy wording for it, is, is to uh, let the um, five uh, homes on the water lapse. They will return back to residential. Uh, then uh, the planning will make a, uh, an amendment to the official plan with their housekeeping uh, to make that change. So they return to that. And the, um, also that the, uh, the area of the mixed use from the 25th to Lakelands lapse and go back to residential. Um, because I can't see how we could, if there was any other way that staff could table the mixed use, because this is not the economic climate uh, to determine uh, if this is a, a profitable and uh, decision for that. And uh, that is really allowing the lapse on all the, uh, the other properties. So is that the what's in this, uh, Mr. Pierce? Uh, so if I just to clarify, uh, there would be no rezoning on the five Lakelands properties, no amendment to the shoreline bylaw, and no commercial zoning proposed on the remainder of the in the ICB lands. For that, so that's 25th east to Lakelands Avenue. Correct. So no changes whatsoever just to clear, clarify. Uh, and what I mean by that is um, no changes would be required because the ICB la uh, lapses tomorrow. Um, um, the existing zoning regulations would come into place tomorrow. 
So what what would be the way forward? So I, I need somebody to provide some some um, some direction or some uh, recommendation so that we can we can vote. So this okay. revised recommendation is asking for uh, the lakelands to be left out, but the other uh, mixed use to be left in. That's what I'm reading. Oh, no. No. no, 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 no. That's option three. That's option. that's all to lapse. Okay, so is that what this says, Mr. Why Peter? can't we table the whole motion? Leave it sit for a year. Well, no. we, we would be. Like if if we if we throw up our hands in the air and say, you know what, we're no good, we're negative. This is we just want to stay the way we are, and then that's what we're doing. I find those comments offensive. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to be offensive, Councillor. I'm just saying, if 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 staying the way we are is 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 what um, this council is about, then that's what we're about. My my uh, request uh, was to put in an amendment to see if there is an interest from council to um, lapse the five homes on the water and lapse the uh, mixed use on Innocent Beach Road, returning all back to residential. So that's my vote and or my amendment. And uh, because I, I, unless I can clarify with planning that with the mixed use area, there is a way that they could lapse that one to give them more time to look at the commercial viability after uh, the COVID, because this is really going to be the future of commercialism. Uh, Galen. Uh, yeah, I, so I can clarify this option is conceived on the top of page 12 of the staff report. I believe Councillor Asadi is describing allowing the ICB to, to lapse. Um, and uh, we go on to, staff goes on to clarify that we would need direction uh, in terms of correcting the, the mismatch between uh, the official plan and the existing zoning. Um, and then the option previous to that is to extend it up to one year um, and that decision would be appealable. Right. So I, I'm, I'm quite certain that's, that's is, was that not your intention, uh, Councillor Asadi, for your revised recommendation wasn't to extend the ICB? No. Okay. Okay, so the option's on the floor and is there a seconder for this option? Yes, Councillor Bill Van Berkel. And you're asking for direction. Um, the, so the last paragraph is, what do you do about the um, the mismatch now between the approved uh, official plan? You're right. wanting direction. So I think what I heard you say earlier, Councillor, was that you thought that uh, at the next housekeeping of the uh, official plan, that it be changed back? Well, that would be required, wouldn't it? Because it's in the official plan that this is a mixed use zoning. My understanding from planning is that they would be required to amend the official plan with the next housekeeping. That's, that's what I'm suggesting. So um, just a question to Mr. Kane. Uh, so what happens in the meantime, uh, if that, uh, let's say the housekeeping amendment's not going to be for a year. What happens if an application comes in for one of these properties uh, that are that's designated in the official plan as um, as commercial? Uh, through your worship to yourself, I guess. Um, yeah, if we had an application for commercial development in the meantime, uh, while that OP designation was in effect. Um, you know, if they, they would have to apply for a rezoning regardless, uh, through that rezoning process, uh, in the consultation process and council's consideration, um, the direction given tonight would inform, you know, whether or not to support that rezoning application request. Uh, I would suggest that, um, you know, while those OP policies are in place, if there is direction to amend them and, and that was in process, I think it would make it very difficult to support that zoning application to, to move it to a commercial development. So, you know, while technically that that broader land use designation is still sitting in the OP until it's corrected, uh, the processing of any zoning application that would be required by a commercial use 
uh, would be would be very difficult for both staff and council to support. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Oh, Mr. Rayner. Thanks very much, uh, Your Worship, members of council. I just um, I'm just a little concerned uh, around the level of confusion between the language that's in the motion in front of you and what uh, council uh, uh, council's intent may be. Uh, I'd like to recommend that you consider dividing the question and and moving through these very complicated pieces one at a time. Uh, we can work with clerks, perhaps, uh, just to get to some basic questions. You can even straw poll, frankly, to just get some clarity as, as uh, clerks works on the resolutions. Because there is some complicated wording around the zoning, and I think it's you know, removing or not endorsing or not moving forward with very complicated. I think the way Councillor Asadi had, had initially stated, I think if I understood correctly, was her initial first move or first uh, piece of this puzzle was to not have uh, any changes to what was what is currently in the zoning bylaw related to the five properties on Lakelands. If I understood Councillor Asadi correctly, she can she can jump in and correct me if, if I'm wrong. Uh, but I think that would be perhaps the first question is, do you want Lakelands in or out, uh, uh, the five houses or not? And then I think you could move to whether you want IBR, uh, the properties from 25th to Lakelands, in or out. Uh, and then there may be a third question that I think staff on the planning side are trying to understand, which is what happens next. But I think if, if certainly the people on the call who've been sitting through uh, this uh, have that clarity, um, we can work through the logistics of what might come from those two initial questions. Just a suggestion, your worship members of council, try to try to make sure everybody understands what you're voting on. Uh, it's, it's it's complicated. Yeah. And and I agree with you, uh, Mr. Rayner, that. Um, if we have those separated, it's easier for everyone to follow. So my first recommendation is that the five houses on the lake are removed from this mixed use and returned back to residential. This is a recorded vote, right? Councilor Nichol. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, obviously, this is getting kind of muddy here tonight. And I'm just wondering, my understanding was Councilor Sadi was looking at option three originally. And now it appears she's looking at option four. I'm wondering if Mike just for clarity for all council, if we just said this is option four that we're looking at or option three, or if you're looking at a hybrid or whatever else, it may be easier since that's all the information that's already posted online. So if there's something completely different, then by all means, but otherwise option one was on the table. Option two was an option. Option three, I thought was going to be the revised recommendation. And now it appears that option four is on the table. So again, with the wording here, it is getting muddy and perhaps that would be a much easier way to clarify all of it. Mr. Parkin. Uh, looks like uh, Ms. Toma is, is tweaking that recommendation. I'm, I'm not sure if anyone from planning staff is able to help just ensure that, that if we have an option that it matches what's in the report, if that will help simplify. Uh, the wording yes. on the screen. Uh, yes, you may. Yes, to um, uh, clerk's office, we can put together um, a revised recommendation that reflects option two um, or option three um, and send that through for discussion now. So what option, uh, so I'm, I'm gonna put, let's just do a straw hands here. Who's, who's in favor of option one? Who's in favor of option two? Who's in favor of option three? Who's in favor of option four? But, but your worship, that it, it depends because if option four is not chosen, then then council may go to an option three or two. No, I understand that. I'm just trying to decide which option we should put on the table. So, or do we do we want to try it Mr. Rayner's way, which was divide the question. So the first question is um, the, the five houses on lake lands. Your worship members of council, one other suggestion, um, just full of ideas tonight. Uh, we could take a, a couple of mo a minute recess, uh, allow uh, clerk staff to put on the screen the, the various options. 
option three and option four, I think seem to be the, the most uh, uh, critical right now. And then how that translates into the planning direction, uh, which is going to be the complicated kind of part of that story. But uh, it would only take us a few minutes, I think, uh, putting some pressure on my team, but just to, just to make sure everybody's on the same page uh, about what that looks like. I think that's a, that's a great idea. Uh, so we'll take, uh, it's uh, 934, we'll take uh, till 940. Okay, Council. Thank you. Yes. Yes.
Hi, everyone. Welcome back. And for those of us who've stayed with us all this time, thank you for your um, tireless <laughs> engagement. Much appreciated. As you can see, uh, Council is very passionate about their town and their decision making. Uh, they don't do it lightly and we, uh, we do it messy. We do it on the fly and at the council table, which is the way it should be. Uh, Mr. Rayner. Thank you, worship members of council. We appreciate the opportunity uh, to um, uh, collaborate behind the scenes to try to get some language up in front of you that uh, will help clarify these things. We have discovered that uh, COVID has its disadvantages. Um, typically in the chamber in these circumstances, we would run over and huddle. Um, you may have heard us trying to do that through Teams, uh, one of our other alternative uh, technologies. And so we apologize uh, if there was uh, some background noise and confusion uh, or expletives. I'm not sure exactly what you heard. So um, we will uh, try to get that up onto the screen now. But I think we're trying to capture the, the concept that, uh, that Councillor Saudi was originally trying to move an amendment for, uh, option three. And then, of course, we can put other options up onto the, the, uh, the screen as well. So that, again, the first concept would be, is Lakeland supposed to be in or out? I think there's a number of people on the call that would be very, very relieved uh, to have that, that issue resolved tonight. Um, and then uh, we can move through the various other options that Council have been discussing tonight. I'll turn it over to uh, um, someone on our team to describe what's in front of you now in terms of the language. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, Mayor and members of council, so the revised option in front of you, uh, recommendation in front of you reflects option three on page 12 of the staff report. And it um, proceeds with the mixed use zoning, which allows for both commercial and residential development to happen. It continues to step from a four to a two story as you get closer to the lake, but restricts it just to the Innisfil Beach Road properties and removes the five lake land properties in its entirety and maintains the um, the uh, the ICB would lapse on the five Lakelands properties, and the R Shores bylaw would remain intact for those five Lakeland properties. Um, and that is the recommendation that is before you. And I'm happy to answer any questions on this option three. Count Councillor Sadi. Thank you, thank you for your patience in this. So what we're looking at right now is the option three that was in the report. Is that correct? Through you, Mayor, to Councillor Rosati, correct. This is option three from the report. So if we are, the, the option, um, I, I guess I'm just a little confused and, and I was looking at uh, our CAO's recommendation of of just taking the five homes out of option three, but not the rest of it. So when you when we're it's not really a split splitting the item. This is going back to option three. So if we voted on this and this passed, that means that the option four, which is to allow all of it to lapse, does not get entered for a vote. Correct. That's correct, but if this fails, then option four could be brought forward. I think it's almost the other way around. I'm sorry, I don't understand. So if option four, if, if the rest of council did not like option four, then, then we would have the option to vote on option three. You, you want them you want them in that order I do yes to me it makes more sense because if you vote on this then you haven't lapsed the rest of it so so whereas if if every if if can if there's an interest in council to allow all of it to lapse and return back to residential and that passes then that includes the five houses if council if the majority of council does not agree with that, then we have the option to vote on option two or three or one if, if there was an interest, but. Councillor Nichol. 
Thank you, Worship. Just for clarification, it appears that Councilor Asadi wants option four as her revised recommendation. Uh, so perhaps that's what she's looking for. We're going to vote on that. If that passes, it passes. If it does not, then we can revert back. And I'd be happy to uh, to uh, to bring this motion up for option three forward myself if I can find a seconder afterwards. Thank you. So can we see option four, please? Councilor Rayner, or Councilor Rayner, Mr. Rayner. Thank you, Worship. Uh, so the only challenge with going with option four number uh, to, as this first one that council's considering is it's the most broad. So it, it encompasses Lakelands, it encompasses IBR, it's the whole thing. You're basically saying to the 600 people who, who responded to a survey and said that they wanted to see change in this area, that nothing is happening, that all of what has happened is it, council is killing all of it and none of it will move forward. My suggestion to you was that you actually deal with the Lakelands because the only thing you heard tonight, except for one person, was a concern around Lakelands. So uh, that's the most narrow focus. And, and when you're trying to work through complicated issues, my suggestion is that you start with the most narrow, the most specific that everybody's clear about, and then then zoom out. But but of course, it's your motion, Councillor Saudi, so uh, uh, it's your call. But Mr. Rayner, um, it still offers all that the the council, with the exception of three, three of us, um, passed the park vision, which allowed uh, the commercial, the, the restaurant on the park and all the other amenities. So this is just excluding not the park, but a residential road and the houses on the water. That That's... If I could, Your Worship, that's that's a great point, Councillor Saudi, and I think I think that's perhaps the confusion, and perhaps uh, Mr. Pierce could speak to the the critical component of IBR in that overarching scheme, because I think there does seem to be some confusion uh, about what would be lost if you were to simply allow the entire ICD to lapse. Mr. Pierce, thank you. Yeah, um, I think I would highlight the level of interest in food. Uh, retail, um, arts and entertainment opportunities in and around the park. Uh, those were our, among the top, uh, food options being the top item uh, we heard from all of our survey and survey results. And, um, 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 and it was something that we had heard at the open houses as well. So without uh, without having that ICB connection, I think there would be um, a missed opportunity to make um, the best use of lands, uh, best use of this land, uh, to uh, strengthen the connection to the downtown core, to um, broaden the activity level that we're seeing in Innisfil Beach Park, which is currently congested along the shoreline. Uh, we want to see that activity pulled away from the shoreline and into the um, underutilized green space to the west. Uh, this is something that was brought up several times tonight. Uh, and it would, it would also force us to rethink uh, how we're going to be connecting um, Innisfil Beach Park with the downtown core. I think we would have to make uh, more dramatic revisions to the Innisfil Beach Park, uh, Innisfil Beach Park Vision 2020. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I think I, I would highlight that, that um, there was a, a, a great deal of support for a lot of what the ICB lands uh, could offer. Thank you. Um, so it, it doesn't matter to me which we vote on first, which we vote on second, but uh, I just want to make a couple of comments about um, we're, we're going to have to, if, if this, if we pass, option four, we're, we're going to have to go back to the drawing board, go back to a strategic planning se session, um, start again, um, because I don't think we can keep creating a vision and getting direction and going out to, um, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of residents and coming up with something and then saying, nope, let's start again, do something else. And then we send staff back and they start again and they come up with a new vision and a new, and we go, nope, we don't want that either. We, instead of saying what we don't want, I think we have to start telling staff what we do want. Instead of saying, we don't like this, we don't like this, we don't like this. 
And again, I think it should be right from the start so that we don't spend, you know, months, if not years on a vision that then gets pushed back from six people. And we, even though supported by hundreds and, and we say, no, because then we'll never do anything because there will always be, doesn't matter what comes in front of us, whether it's anything, it, there'll always be at least one person who won't like it. And then we'll say no. And, you know, we're, we're just going to have to, at one point, if this doesn't pass tonight, uh, then we're going to have to step back, go back to strategic planning session and have staff ask us, what is it you want? And we're going to have to say what we want as opposed to just saying, no, 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 don't like that. We don't like that. Because we have to give them, in all fairness, we have to give these folks some direction. Uh, Councillor Waters. Uh, I agree with you 100% on that. We're allowing five people to dictate the entire development when the entire visioning process was was had community feedback and it had you know 600 people say what they wanted to hear, and and so now when you go forward with anything, if there's one or two or three people who are opposed to it, uh, they'll be able to change you know a vision that took years to develop with consultation from the public. So um, you know I th I think we should. Uh, go ahead and have the vote and 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 let the let things fall where they may. But I think it's really a shame that five people can uh, can change the entire vision of a town when a lot more people had uh, uh, positive things to say about what they wanted to see downtown. Thank you, Councillor Ices. Yeah, I, I'd have to uh, really disagree with with those uh, last two comments. These surveys are. Uh, they're helpful and, and they give us direction, but the specifics aren't there. Of course, everybody wants a nice place to eat at a restaurant. Of course, everybody wants retail in their community. And we've seen it, um, we've heard it, there's opportunities on Innisfil Beach Road for that. So just because we don't wanna put it in a, res a currently residential area and are on the lake shore, now you're saying that, well, we, you know, we just disregarded all of that. And I, I just think that's just not true. I just think there is a lot of questions about this bylaw going through. There's a lot in a, in a pandemic when there's the economics of it are questionable at best, that this, this is a safer option that, we leave in a, the residents there alone for a while and, and let them enjoy that beautiful part of Innisfil that they do enjoy. So thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments or we'll call the vote and it's a recorded vote. Uh, Councillor or Deputy Mayor Davidson and then Councillor Sadi. I concur with Councillor Isis. The last two comments were insulting that when five members of council make a decision that is the democratic process. I've seen it many other times where pe five people vote and change the course of Big Bay Point. So let's remember we are a democracy here. Absolutely, this is democracy in action. I couldn't agree more. And, and I'm, I'm gonna make a notice of motion at the next meeting. We go back to the strap planning session and figure out where we go from here. Councillor Sadi. Thank you. Well, first off, I, I, you know, I, I know that planning is probably sitting there with their, you know, hands sitting on their hands or whatever. Um, uh, it's good job that I'm not going into council uh, lately. Uh, but all these surveys and all the questions, it was not about Innisfil Beach Road. It was about the park. What do you want to see in the park? So there's a difference between the park, and I know it correlates the, the street, Innisfil Beach Road, but people are buying lakefront properties and they're putting millions of dollars into, um, you know, fixing them up and building their forever homes. What's to say that people aren't going and want to do the same thing along Innisfil Beach Road? And that was my, my reason for uh, choosing this. And again, I'll ask for a recorded vote. 
Okay, we'll call the vote. Uh, Mr. Pierce. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, there wouldn't need to be no change to the CPPS and I see Lee has just made that change, so. Thank you. Mr. Parkin. A recorded vote has been called. Excuse me, are we voting on option three or option four that Don or Saudi wants? It doesn't matter. You what what does it okay, whatever. You guys pick whatever you want to vote on. Well, again, I, I to me it makes sense that you vote on option four first, because if there isn't enough interest in that, then you can decide which options uh, council wants besides that. If you vote on option three, that means you've killed four, correct? So that's not the first amendment I'm requesting. No, it, doesn't it doesn't matter, Donna, if this fails, oh, no. you can, <laughs> then you can go to option four. If so, this so option you fails, you can go yeah. to option four. Yeah. Does that make sense? But well, uh, the concern for me is that if option four fails, then I want option three. So that's where I don't want to vote on option three first because uh, yeah. I, I understand where you're coming from, but I, I, I don't think there was, there was only one person on council was interested in option two. So I don't think that that's, that's a, a scare, but it's up to you. There's option four up there now. Do you have the seconder? And we'll get a recorded vote. Uh, Councillor Van Berkel, do I still have you as seconder? I'll second it for you. I want to get going with it. Okay, let's let's call the vote, Mr. Parkin. Sorry, sorry to add to the drama, Your Worship. <laughs> um, I, I don't think option four is exactly um, what Councillor Asai may want. Um, I think there needs to be uh, just a slight modification to the third recommendation on there. Uh, I think it's quite clear that, you know, the properties on Lakelands aren't to be affected. So uh, I think to, to extend the interim control bylaw, you know, is, is, a, is a reasonable idea to continue discussions on, on the balances of those Innisfil Beach Road properties. Um, so I think option, uh, sorry, option three, I think recommendation three, uh, just needs to have some wording at the end, uh, save and accept those properties on Lakelands Avenue fronting Lake Simcoe or abutting Lake Simcoe. Um, and I think I passed some of that wording on to clerks uh, if they need it. Abutting Lake Simcoe might be better. Thank you. I'm sorry to interject in such a interesting uh, debate. Thank you, Mr. Kane. So to be clear, you can see how you can see how hard this is for staff. So they're now asking this recommendation says that the current income control bylaw um, be extended for a year except for the Lakelands abutting. So there, this recommendation says that it's you've got another year with an income interim control bylaw on the Innisfil Beach Park property only and not on the Lakelands property. The last ditch effort to try to save some of the um, work. So, so then um, the just confirming for, for those residents watching as well, the Lakelands properties resume back to the residential and they're removed from the interim control bylaw. And yeah. those properties that are on the Innisfil Beach Road from the 25th to Lakelands will stay under the interim control period for one more year for staff to look at uh, financial viability of that strip. Is that what this is saying? Yes, and they have the ability to appeal. Okay, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm good with this. Councillor Van Berkel, yeah, all right. I, I'm, I'm good with that. It gives, it gives a, a little bit staff to come back to us and give more justification for the others, but the five homes are removed and uh, I'm good with that. And recorded vote, please. Mr. Parker. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. I've got um, the recorded vote uh, form ready here. So just, as, just another reminder, we have uh, a randomizer. So the names 
are in a random order. Um, when I call your name, just please let me know if you're in favor or against. We'll start with Councillor Waters. Against. Deputy Mayor Davidson. In favor, okay. Councillor Van Berkel. In favor. Okay. Councillor Ices. In favor. Councillor Fowler. In favor. Mayor Dolan. Against. Councillor Payne. She said in favor, she was muted. Did you not, Councillor Payne? Yeah, if you have to hear my voice, it's in favor. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Saudi. In favor. And Councillor Nickel. Against. So that is six in favor, three against, that's carried. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for the great debate. Um, Mr. Parkin, do we need a, um, a motion to extend past the hour? Can I have a yes. mover? If and you could, and to say how long you'd like to keep going for. We have uh, a couple of items that I don't think they're going to be extensive. Could we stay till 1030? Mover and a seconder, Councillor Van Berkel, Councillor Fowler, all those in favor? Thank you, everybody. I'd like to get this done as opposed to come back for another night. Okay, the next item that was pulled was uh, C9, and that was Deputy Mayor Davidson. I have C6 here as one of the items before C9. Oh, my apologies. That, that was me. Um, could I get a seconder? For, I guess, could I have somebody move and second? I can't do that. Uh, Councillor Fowler and Councillor Nickel. And I wondered if um, at this point we might want to consider uh, delegating authority for heritage permits to members of staff. We've had about a dozen of these come before us and we've never once made any comment on any of them. We don't really have the I don't have the skill set to comment on whether or not a, a building permit is uh, or design is properly heritage. And in the case where we have a summer um, break, uh, it could cause people like months of waiting for us to receive these items and approve them. Um, so I'm wondering if the mover and seconder would allow that we add to the motion uh, um, that we and that um, delegated authority for the heritage permit process be given to staff. Uh, Councilor Van Berkel. I think your worship that that's a good idea. Um, you're absolutely right. There's too much, too long in between, and uh, we need to do something like that. Not only with this, but with oh, some, of the other, some of the other, some of the other committees, and, and you know as well. So I'm I'm totally in favor of what you're trying to do here. Ms. Nordstrom, did you have any comments? That's... Thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, just that um, the Heritage Conservation District Plan does require that these major um, applet, these types of applications do go before council. So we um, will uh, look to have to look to amend that um, to have this delegated authority. And we um, are honored by the uh, opportunity to um, have that delegated authority and continue to work with the Heritage Committee on these applications. Mr. Parkin? Sorry, just getting the wording here. Could you repeat the... So perhaps it could be that the uh, that staff look at the possibility of delegating authority at the next update of the HCD. Does that work? Um, Ms. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Thank you. Because Mr. Kane did say that they were looking at maybe an update of it. So. Does that work? Thank you. Yes. Is the mover and seconder okay with that? Yes? I am. Thank you. 
All in favor of the recommendation? Any opposed? That is carried. Next is item, Deputy Mayor's item, item C9. Thank you. I'm just going to say I'm glad to see that staff recommend we do this after 2022 election. Um, as you can see, this council has a lot on its plate with COVID-19. Staff have a lot to do as we come out of COVID-19. So I just want to say thank you for uh, moving this to the next council's consideration. Thank you. Do you have a mover and a seconder? Uh, can I get one there? Ken Fowler. I don't see the other. So you're the mover and, and Councillor Fowler will be the seconder. Seconder, yeah, so we're good Councillor Sadi. Thank you, yes, I, I just wanted to say that it's, um, I'm glad to see staff uh, looking into this. I agree with the recommendation to uh, wait following the 22 uh, election. I think at that time uh, with the development and more homes, it gives a more accurate way at uh, looking at uh, ward boundary review. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor of the recommendation? Opposed? That's carried. Next was item D3. Um, a mover and a seconder for that item, please. Uh, Councillor Arsati and Deputy Mayor Davidson. Just a question, if I might. Um, the staff report talks about about uh, the school board granting an easement, I believe that was on school board property, and I'm assuming that's for maintenance for us to maintain. And I just wondered, uh, Ms. Jenkins, thanks for sticking with us throughout all this. I wondered if that would set a precedent. Are we then going to get every other school in Ennisville wanting us to um, do maintenance or, 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 um, or snow plow paths. And if you could in fact tell me, was that the um, original, is that what the easement's for? Uh, through you, your worship, uh, that is the intent of the easement is to allow the town to maintain that trail um, at all times, even throughout the winter. Um, that could potentially set a precedent um, for other locations that, um, that might be considered for something similar. Um, but at this point, we've only made commitments with the school board for this particular location. Thank you. And then my next question would be to Mr. Inwood. So, um, you know, if, if we do get requests from other, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I know that when Councillor Arsetti and I were on a walk around Alcona Glen, um, there was a path through the back of the school that possibly could have been used more by the students had the path been plowed. But the school board, of course, says, you know, we don't have the resources to do that. So I'd, I'd like your comments on, um, on allowing this type of um, easement and, and how that would impact the town. Uh, thank you, Worship. Uh, we would consider each individual case on a case by case study and um, of course, make the, the appropriate recommendations or decisions based on uh, that review. In this particular case, we see no concerns. Um, and, and as I said, we would, we would just evaluate each one on a case by case uh, basis. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor uh, Council Waters. I think the easement is a, a, a great way of dealing with it because uh, we, this way we are in charge of the entire path uh, to and from, we don't have to rely on uh, the school principal or the board changing their mind uh, halfway through after we put you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in. So I think it's a great uh, way of dealing with the issue that we had. There were there were a few concerns about uh, the future of the trail uh, uh, past that fence. So I think I think this was a, a a good option, and I'm glad to see it went through. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Councillor Sadi? Thank you. Just um, maybe something that um, uh, Councillor Waters wants to look at uh, with operations um, is that uh, the amount of parents that will be driving there and parking to walk the kids through there that might create uh, some consequential um, traffic uh, inquiries uh, that come forward to the Traffic Safety Committee. Just a heads up. 
proactive. Uh, and in that case, I'll be asking you, Donna, what I should do. There, there, the, the good news is on that one bend, there's no driveways. So, uh, but yes, beware, the phone will start ringing. Just like the minute we resurfaced Maple, we started getting speed limit calls on Maple. It's inevitable. So, uh, hearing no other questions or comments, all in favor? That's carried. And we have the rise of recommendation, or sorry, the recommendation to rise and return back to council session, moved by Councillor Sadi, seconded by Councillor Waters. All those in favor? That's carried. And the recommendations and committee of the whole meeting be adopted as resolutions of council, moved by Councillor Fowler, seconded by Councillor Payne. All those in favor? That is carried. Any notices of motion? We've received none and I see none from the floor. And announcements. Any announcements for members of council? Uh, Councillor Sadi. Thank you. I figure I should end with something positive since I stirred the pot tonight. Um, just to say that uh, with good news with our libraries that they have started a uh, small uh, reopening that uh, residents may come in, pick up an item, pick up a book, and then leave. There's no loitering. Uh, the patio is open in the Lakeshore Library, um, but it uh, provides an opportunity for people to, to look at what is available and to uh, just uh, see the staff again. So I, I, staff have gone a long way out of, out of their way uh, to set all the uh, parameters in place, but it's, it's really a, a nice feeling to a start back to a normal routine. Thank you. And pot stirring is always welcome on this council. Um, you know, it, it happens, what i more most proud of with, with local government is we do do it uh, in open forum. And uh, unlike provincial and federal governments that, you know, do all the kicking and screaming in a back room um, confidentially and then come out all smiley, like they've always agreed on everything. So I think the way we do it is much more real. So, uh, Councillor Sadi? Yes, just a follow up to that because I, I think we have a great team on council and uh, work well with staff. So um, I just want to uh, recognition of, of the respect for other council members. And I like the debates. It's, it's about looking at paradigm shifts and different ways of thinking. Thank you. Other announcements? Uh, Councillor Van Berkel. Thank you, just some information. I had a couple of calls and they were from my ward actually. Um, if we can get an update on the stairway between Adams Road and Simcoe Boulevard, uh, maybe somebody's here that can update us on that. Ms. Jenkins? Through your worship to Councillor Van Berkel, uh, construction is underway. Um, they are actively out there working on the project right now. And we've actually set up a Get Involved Innisfil page for the project that, will, that uh, residents can subscribe to in order to receive updates on the project. So um, if anybody is interested in um, getting those updates, please visit that page and, and subscribe to receive those updates. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Other announcements from members of council, Councillor Fowler. Uh, yes, I just something I've encountered. I've reached out uh, to the young lady's mother. I haven't heard back from her, so I apologize if I'm not addressing the proper ward. Uh, there is a young lady who has a sweets business. She's a fairly young girl. She's raising some money for sick kids. Uh, she's uh, They have a link on her page. Uh, it says mysickkidsdonations.com forward slash sweets by Serena. She's trying to raise $500. And it's a young girl actually baking and making all the, the treats herself. So, I mean, I think this is something we should support when our community reaches out and tries to help those around us. Thank you, Councillor. Any other announcements? Seeing none, I wondered if, um, if uh, staff have any announcements this evening, Mr. Rayner, for the good of the corporation? Uh, no, thank you, uh, Councillor, Your Worship, uh, uh, members of Council. Just wanted to thank you for endorsing uh, the COVID response. Uh, 
this continues to be a state of emergency. You may not have known it by tonight's council meeting, but uh, we continue to uh, pour energy into COVID response uh, in the reopening plans. And uh, we appreciate your endorsement of that, of that, uh, that report tonight. And, and I just wanna thank all of the hard work that staff is doing. Uh, there's not a lot of holidays happening this summer for sure. Thank you. Thank you, yes. And if I could uh, ask staff, the, those who wish to, I know it's late, um, uh, turn their cameras on so that we can acknowledge and see all of the hard work that goes on behind the scenes. Um, I had somebody tell me something today that really struck home. Uh, they said uh, they shouldn't call it working from home, they should call it living at work. And I know that's how many of you probably feel. I know I do. Uh, so I just want to give you all um, many thanks for being with us tonight. And with that, I will uh, call for the confirming bylaw and adjournment. And thanks staff again for um, another late meeting. The confirming bylaw is uh, moved by uh, Councillor Ices and second by Councillor Waters. All those in favor? That is carried and the adjournment bylaw is by Councillor Nickel. Always has his hand up first. Councillor Fowler, all those in favor, that's carried. I'd, I'd say have a good rest of the evening, but I think that's almost behind us. So um, have a good uh, tomorrow and we'll talk soon in our next meeting. Um, We'll be, uh, we don't have any special, oh yeah, we have our uh, next meeting uh, about uh, planning public meeting about Friday Harbor and that is next Wednesday night. So thanks everybody, take care. Good night, good night. Good night.